right on fucking time. Right on time. Damn, yo, look at God, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm lit. Oh, geez. You want me to start it off? You start no, I'm ready. I was, I was waiting for you to finish. I'm ready. All right, this is We Need Answers podcast, uh, special edition today. Got my my brother Chris Simon here. We on episode I think sixty nine. No, we on episode episode seven. I told say, you I I'm working. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> I don't want to be on sixty nine. <laughs> I'm working, man. Seventy. So uh, we here at Black Swan. Um, I know a lot of people might be just getting familiar uh, with you, as far as being Black Swan. Then you got people getting familiar with you from the mental health. They already know you from that. And you got people like me. Know you from Ceno, Chris, from day one with the dreads, yeah, back in the day. So, um, you know, all my podcasts, I usually shed light on the businesses and people that's important in the town, was amongst other topics and all that. But, um, so starting from the top, I want to tell like how I met you. You know, I met you through my my cousin, like my big brother Day. Mm-hmm. Day, I remember when I was like fourteen, I was going to uh, Hammer Jacks with all of them, and I was hanging with the village niggas and all that. Day and them was older. Y'all was always older than me. And I remember going to Hammer Jacks. This is back when you had the van. We mm-hmm. were selling clothes out the van. Mm-hmm. I was going in there and we, we came outside. You know, before we went in, they called you down there. Everybody bought clothes. I'm like, damn, who cares? Hell, like everybody just bought Ceno shirts. Went in. Like we yeah. was repping kind of yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I first met you. Fast forward a little bit down when you got the store on um, York Road. We gonna get all this. I'm just I'm just building it. Yeah, yeah. So on York Road, the store on York Road. Um, my first job, my first real job outside of Youth Works was working at Camden Yards. And I remember when I got my check, first check I got, I'll never forget, I went and got that C No set. It was Youth Works? I, no, I was working at Camden Yards. Oh, this okay. is my first outside. job outside. Okay. So so when I first got my first check, I went to C No. I got red and white. It was a, You had a, a, a set with a ring of teeth. It had the big C on it. Mm-hmm. I used to love the embroidery shit. That the C with the star? No, the big one like this. I don't know if it was solid, but it had a big mm-hmm. C and then it had C you know, and it had the red, the shorts, the gray shorts with the red strip. Mm-hmm. And I had the red and white pennies. And yep. I had on like a, a Cincinnati Reds fitted back in the day. Did it have a stripe down the shirt? No, it was a ring of teeth. Oh, like the, the red, red right here, yep, the red yep, right yep, here. Yep, 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 yep. So, so um, you know, I was I was going to school in the county. I was living in the county, but my my grandmother East, everybody else is West. So when yeah. I went over West with it, a lot of people that wasn't here got familiar and yeah. I was going in Vincent and all of them started from running but from the top let's talk about your upbringing like where, like where are you, you grew up in and, and, and what pushed you because you're you, you are an entrepreneur from day one yeah so what pushed you into being and it's like touch just talk about how you came up so uh, I'm from East Baltimore I'm from the Alameda okay um I grew up on the Alameda and then my parents wound up moving to Sedonia mm-hmm. at some point um, and so my grandmother lives on Park Heights. Uh-huh. So she lives like Park Heights and Cold Spring, mm-hmm. um, right over that way. And then my aunt lives in Edmondson Village. Okay. So I would be in East Baltimore, mm-hmm. but then I would split my summer between my grandmother's house okay. and Edmondson Village. Right. So I was always East Back West. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, um, um, that's how I met a lot of people, you know, just uh-huh. like just was able to just understand people differently, you know, east side yeah. people are different than west side people. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> little, you know, just their style and manner, yeah, they yeah. themselves, things they like, mm-hmm. um, behaviors and stuff like that, you know, they all Baltimoreans, but you know, so, um, you enjoy the west side though? Yeah, I, I love it all the same, bro. Yeah, I literally love it all the same. Saying, yeah. I love it all. I got some great friends. I went to Lake Clifton, uh-huh. so I went to school over east. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I hung out over west. That's how I met um, Deontay, uh, you know, um, and and Donut and everybody, because mm-hmm. um, they used to live on the same street as Aunt Glenda, okay. your grandmother. Okay, their grandmother. I okay. Yeah, their grandmother lived on Roca. Oh, um, but your cousins in there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. so that's yeah, why I would spend yeah, yeah. my summers okay. there. Okay, okay. We're staying in the yeah, we're staying okay. in the yeah, 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 right, So right, I would spend okay. my summers Got there. Okay. Day and Donut and Wani, everybody used to be down the street yeah. at his grandmother's house. Uh-huh. And then Doozy, Donut, everybody yeah. else around there. On Cold War. Myron, uh-huh. all of those dudes on Cold War. Yeah. Um, and then my cousins used to spend their summer. They were from the they were from the projects. Mm-hmm. They used to spend their summer at my grandmother's. Mm-hmm. So my grandmother, 
a house was just like everybody lived there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We Typically, all that's how we all hung out there. Mm-hmm. And my aunt, you know, she was real, she she's real fly. So she kind of like provided me a level of like style, mm-hmm. would buy me the stuff that um, my mother wouldn't buy me or okay. couldn't afford or didn't want to. Uh-huh. You know, didn't see the value in it. Uh, and my older cousin used to live there. My one cousin got killed. He was from over Fiddle Street, mm-hmm. Homewood. Um, but he was very fly, dude. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, very, very fly. Like, when he got killed, I was in, like, my ninth or 10th grade year at Lake Clifton. Mm-hmm. And I, I always had, like, some pieces, mm-hmm. like, some clothing. But when he died, my gear went to another level. Okay, you got his I got all of his stuff, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then from there on, and I kind of think that's kind of, like, where my love for fashion kind of came into. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always aspired to have slick stuff. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't attain it. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. I was surviving off my parents, and, right. you know, uh, it was a good household, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but by no means were we rich, but also by no means were we actually poor right. at that time. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, right. my mother had just, my mother had gotten married, um, so, you know, we had a we had a solid home. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they, they didn't find value in buying sneakers and Jordans and stuff mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, um, um, my aunt would buy some of that stuff, but I think that's where my passion for it came. Okay. Like I used to, with Legos, I used to make Legos and make a, a Nintendo, I used to put, make a Sega Genesis. Okay. With like a planet, yeah, because yeah, I didn't yeah. have a Sega Genesis, then I okay. got one, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, and that's kind of just like how things are like, you know, before Black Swan, I had like a little nightclub in my basement. Okay. Or something like that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, but I sold that house. But mm-hmm. And now I got Black Swan. Right. So it's always like these things that you have, you yeah. build in it, and, you know, yeah. until you actually, and then and then it manifests itself. Right. So that's kind of like how C-Note got started. Um, that was the question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, they're going into it. I'll bring it on. So yeah. So, it. you know, went to Lake Clifton. While I was at Lake Clifton, I, um, I mean, I, I got a diverse background. Like, I'm from the... Uh, uh, hood, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I was blessed that I've always had like exposure to other stuff. Like okay. I used to play golf. Okay. And, like I was really, really good in golf. Like I had, a, yeah, I had a sponsor and everything. Like I had like of, of Clifton Park. There was these guys called the Paragon uh-huh. Golf Association, uh-huh. and they sponsored me. Right. Like they helped me buy golf clubs. Every send me on tour, send okay. me on tour- the tournaments, get okay. lessons, okay. all of that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um. So like, I got that exposure. Like I would be playing golf at country clubs. I catered for like Lorena Ochoa's best friend, which is like one of the best female golfers ever. Right. Uh, so I was like a caddy for them. Yeah. Uh, and so I would just get this expo. I would like go to my friend's house when they would play golf. They would have these big old houses. You know what I'm saying? They if you ever watch Dion Cole stand up, yeah. when they be like they had supper, mm-hmm. yeah. they had supper. <laughs> Not dinner. <laughs> they had supper. supper. They had yeah, a supper yeah. table and everything. Like okay. we sat down. And ate supper. It might only been macaroni and cheese. Right. I'm like, yo, where's the meat? <laughs> but literally, it, it was a supper. Like, right, right. and they had big homes and everything else like that. And I'm like, wow, like, yo, this is. Yeah. I was getting implanted those seeds of like, yeah. of exposure. You know what I'm and saying? We, we talk. I talk about that a lot on the show about exposure because that's a big part of why our youth go the way we go because we only know streets. We only yeah. know niggas in the streets getting money, drugs, killing. So yeah. once you get shown other things, that's when we can change the narrative a little bit more. Exactly, and that's what we wanted to do with mental health. Make it, uh-huh. make we wanted to normalize it and make it cool. Mm-hmm. So the same way that somebody, you know, like when I first started the mental health, not recent, when I was started creating this platform called Mental Plus Healthcare, mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, I'm not wearing, I, I don't mind wearing suits. Like I'm, a, I'm a businessman at heart. Yeah. Like I'm not a, I'm not a, a hood entrepreneur. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. kind of like. Yeah. Going about it in a in a in a very ignorant urban way. ignorant. Yeah. I don't I don't want to use ignorant urban in the same word, but in true, a sense it's true. Um, but I'm not like a hustler. Let's say that okay. I, I have I have hustler ambition. I have hustler work ethic. Yeah. But you know, yeah. and I don't even want to use hustlers because they could be sophisticated as well. True, true. I'm just saying, like, I am a businessman. Okay. So I'm not opposed to a suit or any yeah. of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. But I'm like, yo, you know what? If we want these kids to sign up for therapy mm-hmm. so that they can become well and healthy and heal, you know, mm-hmm. understand about trauma mm-hmm. and be treated for that, mm-hmm. then I need to dress the way that I dress 
that's going to appeal to them the same way the dope boys are going to appeal to them. Right. So right. when they look at me, right. they're like, oh, yo, what you got on? Oh, man, he fresh. Right. What he talking about? I'll be willing to talk. Yeah, once I got their eyes, then I yeah. get their ear, you know? I'm more willing to talk. Yeah, yeah, about. exactly. So, I mean, we can get back into the mental health part of it later. But yeah, we definitely exposure, go yeah. Exposure is, is very key to that. So I got that. I always got that level of exposure. Mm. So I always knew that there was more out there than what my circumstances mm. kind of um, allowed me to have, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. And I continue to aspire um, for those things. Right. Um, but yeah, back again, I was at working at Lake Cliff. I mean, I went to Lake Cliff right. my last year, I used to, my buddy used to have a clothing line called Be More. Okay. And a team, I used to work at his screen printing shop. Mm. And I don't even know if a team paid me in cash. Um, but a team used to allow me to print my clothes after I got finished printing his clothes. So I what made out. you, what made you want, I know you said you, how you got into fashion, but what made you say, I'm going to do a clothing line because, and I ask that because a lot of people have ideas, and like we said, if you're not exposed to it, you'd be like, I want to do it, but I ain't going to do it. So what made you be like, nah, I want to do a clothing line, I'm going to do it. Like, what was that? that you know, I think it's like every business that I tend to start, I think I start businesses in two ways. Mm -hmm. One, because it's a pivotal piece, a part of the puzzle that the other businesses already that they could benefit from mm -hmm. or yo what's this somebody to do? I heard something I don't, I don't know. know I know Chef was cooking some stuff so either that or um, I see a void and try to fill it and try to fill the void okay so and again Black Swan is the same way BCS is the same way c -Note was the same way c -Note, I saw what people were doing you know I saw different styles like I mean, I've always been in the fashion, like, yeah. even when we couldn't have it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I would go to Rugged Warehouse okay. and get the polo shirts, okay. Okay. get the hill figure shirts, okay. all of that other stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I this was the era of acoustics, we all won, and same most and all that. So, so but it was right prior to that. Okay. So, I went, actually, it was the era of acoustics and butterware and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, that because was really early. Okay. Yeah, because butterware used to have a spot on 20, with a 22 and a 15, and or the 22 and the 40, 44. Uh -huh. It was either the 22 or the 44, or it was the, no, it was the 22 and the 15 or something like that. Right. That would intersect. And I used to, it was a chicken box store, a car wash and butterware. Mm -hmm. And I would go in there, I would just be like, man, this stuff is slick. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Like they get it. Like yeah. they got the clothing that matched the shoes. Yeah, and yeah, so I wanted yeah. my own thing. And I was like, yo, I feel like I could do this as well. Uh -huh. I can provide a level of insight and, and ideas and concepts that nobody else is doing. Right. So I started coming up with C Note, you know, creating new opportunities to excel. Okay. And, Everybody um, did the acronym. Thing yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I went, um, I went to East. I went away to college, um, and I had just got Security Mall. Just had got this embroidery screen back there by like USA Boutique. Yeah. It was like these people that did embroidery. Like the thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so my mother gave me some money. Um, and I went and got some stuff embroidered, some t-shirts embroidered and everything. And I went, I, one thing I always know is that, yo, you gotta give away stuff Absolutely. to create a brand Absolutely. at the same time. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? So I made some shirts and I gave them away to my buddy Barrington. Mm -hmm. I gave them away to my boy Darren. And I had one, I think I may have like one or two more I might have sold. Mm -hmm. And we had, it was a tic-tac board, a tic-tac-toe board and it said c no, c no, c no. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, had the headband and everything kind of like that hope it was like hobo okay you know what okay. i'm saying and it matched those jordan threes those black white and uh retros and that's all you needed yeah that's so all you needed. went to school with that i gave that away people started developing an affinity for it mm -hmm. i hit my my man Dern. he was like um you know he's real fly and he knew a lot of people you know mm -hmm. and so he was like somebody you wanted to know like he, he knew the hood okay but then he also knew sophisticated and business people okay. you know what i'm saying okay. so i was like yo why don't you do this with me yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we can take, I feel like with somebody like you, we can take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not thinking, yo, neither one of us got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we just know a lot of, now we yeah. know a lot of people, but we don't have a lot of money. Right. So I went back and applied for a small business association loan and I wound up getting a loan and I produced some clothing. And when we gave some to Juan Dixon, when he won a national championship, he went on BT the basement and he wore okay. the C note. That's what's up. Yeah, and then we had a fashion show at Eastern Shore with State Properties when State Property first came okay. out. It was doing college 
So we had a fashion show, and they did the college fashion show. Okay. And we had C-Note in that same fashion show. Okay, that's what's up. Um, so uh, at the PAC. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you know what the PAC. Yeah, yeah, you know what the PAC. Yeah. So, um, did the state probably see it? Like, did, yeah, did yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was on stage and everything together. That's what's up. So, um, <laughs> you ain't got pictures? I, I can't. No, Kristen has some pictures. Uh, I got, I've been meaning to ask her. Yeah, you got to find them. That's yeah. <laughs> so... Right after that, so I invested all of that money. I got a $10,000 business loan. I invested it all, like, in the course of a week. Okay. And to, I went to the police repo auction, and I bought a minivan for, like, 800 bucks. It's the white one. Yep, it's, like, silver. Okay. Yeah. Box the, silver, right? yep, the Dodge yeah, Caravan. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And, like, transmission, <laughs> like, an oil leak or something uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. I bought that for, like, 800 and then I spent 9200 and merchandise okay. inventory. Okay. Like I didn't even think about the re up of merchandise or anything. Right. I just spent it all in one. <laughs> but that took discipline at that age. Is that old? 20, 21? You're around like 20, yeah. 20 and you know, end. that's you got, you, you're in the phase of, do I want to get my own stuff? But you strictly put it to the. All in, like, all in the inventory, y'all. Okay. All in the inventory. And I got that. And then me and Day, uh, me and Day, mm -hmm. Day always was a day one supporter of C Note. Yeah. And um, getting everybody else to buy, and D, they was very influential as well. Yeah, like he knew a, a lot, lot of people. He knew a lot of dudes in the streets yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So we would ride through every dope strip, mm -hmm. everywhere, and just um, selling the clothes out the trunk of the car. Yeah. Like literally pulling up at sales. We were down down on Murder Avenue, Murder and um, Emerson Village, okay. Emerson Avenue, okay. all the way down at the bottom. Um, we would be a public road. We'd be down bent low. It's all over. Yo, everywhere, <laughs> every dope strip. Yo, we just pulling up like it could go down any minute. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they knew we wasn't there for that, so we would pull up, sell the clothes, and then hop right in and keep it moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that brand built. I mean, that built an affinity for the brand and people kind of and the demand for it. Mm -hmm. So then, um, Bubba introduced me to my homeboy Lamont. And um and but but is there. Okay. He introduced me to Lamont and Lamont was like now our financial piece. Okay. So Lamont so it was me, Dan and Lamont mm -hmm. and um we wound up getting our first store on Fulton and Riggs. Okay. So I transferred from Eastern Shore mm -hmm. home to Morgan. Okay. And I went and stayed at my mother's house for like two days. I'm like, no, this is not. This is, this is not going to work. Like, I ain't staying home since 17. Like, okay, we're not about to do okay, this. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, not going to yeah. work at it's all. It's definitely different when you yeah, get your yo, home. Yeah, yo, like, space, nah, yeah. man. Like, you know. Was you, was you, where was you staying at Easter Shore? So I stayed at Court Plaza. Okay. And then I went to Hawks Landing. Yeah. And then we had a, and my boys had a place off campus that I used, we just used to live yeah, there. Yeah, Hogs Landing was the one you could buy yourself. Right? Yeah, you buy yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. yo, you so come and go as you that, please, whatever. Like, like, I'm done, man. Yeah. I, I ain't going back. Yeah, I figured <laughs> I spent my summers at my aunt's house mm -hmm. in Emerson Village and my grandma's house in Park Heights. Yeah. I ain't going to say there was no rules. Yeah. But they were very, like, yeah, liberal. Loose, loose. They were okay. very liberal. Okay. It wasn't, my mother's a conservative. Yeah, yeah. Like, Sound you know what I'm like saying? Yeah, like, she wanted to give me I a curfew it. and all yeah, this other stuff. Yeah, and I'm I like, know, what? I know, I know it too well, y'all. This is not going to end well. So, that's, so you got out of there. Yeah, so I ain't had no place to go. I just knew I wasn't going to live there. Yeah. So I wound up living in the back of the Ceno store on Fulton and Riggs. Okay. Like, there was like one room. My man on um, T Bird, because it used to be a Bell's Barn. Mm -hmm. It was T Bell's Bird, Bell's Barn that we converted to a C Note store. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I got ahead of myself for a second. But I used to live um, in the back of that store. Mm -hmm. So when people be like, yo, now when people see you and they're like, I want what he got, I yeah, kind of yeah, want to do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Or you work that hard. Like, I used to, I lit, I started from the, yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, line. literally, like, I lived in the yeah. back of a store. Right. There was a dressing room and then there was another room. That was my room. Sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifice. Um, but what happened was when I was at Eastern Shore, so Samos was popping real heavy. Mm -hmm. Ty got locked up. Mm -hmm. And um, and I used to communicate with Ty. Like me and Ty were friends. Mm -hmm. And we're still friends to this day. Mm -hmm. So like I communicated with Ty, like, yo, like, you know, I was sending him um letters and stuff, asking him about the clothes, just pick his brain. Mm -hmm. On like clothing, he would write me back, mm -hmm. um, and he, he gave me this one place down in D.C. who had like a bunch of blanks. Mm -hmm. So I would take those blanks and get them embroidered and put C note on them. Right? They were just blank T-shirts, oh, just different style stuff. It was like this Korean place that they 
they did manufacturing of it and they just sold it. Mm -hmm. And people used to take it and accessorize it. Mm -hmm. I remember one time they didn't even have shorts. They had shorts, but they were short shorts. Okay. They were like shorts that people wear now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they weren't the Capri style shorts yeah, that we, we wanted there. Yeah, baggy joints. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I bought the pants, went home. My mother bought me a sewing machine, and um, I cut the pants, put the stitchery, witchery, the stuff that you would iron and would stick together, mm -hmm. and I would go around and just put a seam in it. I figured it was. I figured the sewing machine out enough that I could put a, okay. I could put a hem in something. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, and that's what, and I would take it from there and go get it embroidered. Okay. So um, that's what we had. But one of my buddies, um, Rags, he um, used to buy a lot of Sino stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I buy the same old stuff. And they left a tag in one of these one places. Okay. And I still remember this day. It's called Fool of Sports. And you found it. Yo, you found it, gave it to me, and I was like, there's the connect. You found the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I found the plug. So um, I, 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 hit them, I called them up, went down there, uh -huh. and took my designs. They made everything from scratch. Damn. So, like, you know, that's where the inventory money went to. And that's how okay. we started selling the stuff out the trunk of the car uh -huh. or whatever. Um, um, but yeah, man, we wound up getting a store on North Avenue. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, Fulton and Riggs. Fulton and Riggs. Uh -huh. the police station right there to carry out uh -huh. murders, everything. I'm just living in the back of the store. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing I would advise my sons to do now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like was hopefully they would me. never have to do that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. My, my, hopefully my work bears labor, my labor bears fruit. I know it would. So that they don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Right. But um, I did that, and then we finally advanced from there where we were able to get a store on York and Coast Spring. So business was, was doing great. Like yeah, good. business was doing great. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then, we were selling, um, we wound up getting a store on York and Coast Spring. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was our Sino store. Yeah. And then I tra I was at Morgan uh -huh. and was selling clothes. You know, I, we was killing it at Morgan. Mm -hmm. The dudes were like, yo, you get that stuff from? Yeah. Cause you know, the PG dudes, they had Hobo, they had um, Shooters, Shooters yeah. they had Sabiato, they uh -huh. had all that other stuff. And we had a similar style. You know, some of them would like it or whatever. And then we would go to the club and, you know, we were buying bottles. I was, you know, we were 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to be 21. But we were like 21, 22. I mean, buying rose by the caseload, yeah. literally, and giving them away, like, Promotion. Was, pro, like, That's promotion. Give, yeah, it was promotion, yeah. yeah. I wasn't doing the P&L then, yeah. so I couldn't write it off as Mills yeah. Entertainment then. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I knew that we were giving it away. DJ P Drama used to be in the DJ booth. We was at Club Mate. Okay. I would send champagne South to the Baltimore. DJ booth, <laughs> yeah. and he'd be like, don't see no boys in the building, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, whatever, whatever. And that's all for the yeah. campaign. Like, yeah, exactly. Us. Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we created a brand of cool, right. of the desirable thing. To, and that still sticks with today. Like, people yeah. that I met then, Still having, still have a, a level of reverence and respect for what we built then and, and the status that we had then that just, yeah. you know, consistently allows people to respect you and revere you in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So, um, stay the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, we got our second store on North and Howard. No, okay. I'm sorry, on North and Monroe. Um, okay. So, North and Monroe, we got our second store and um, we were jamming there. Then, uh, we had fashion shows at Morgan. It was just, it was jamming. Mm -hmm. Something changed. We were the biggest on, Motions and us were the biggest on like East Side. Okay. Yeah, same olds that controlled West Side. Yeah. Nobody could mess with them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were just literally the, the yeah, goats, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, um, but the style of clothing changed. Right. Yeah. Everything Slim went from down. the big, like Jim Jones, yeah. Did it? Yeah. Like, yeah. like the <laughs> everything jeans, went from big yeah. Yeah. to yeah. the tight fitting t-shirts, right. Right. the true religion jeans, uh -huh. smalled out, mm -hmm. then Abercrombie and yeah. all that yeah. other yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And it's like, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our quality of shirts wasn't the same as their shirts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And we couldn't find out where to get khaki cargos. I mean, mm. we're like in like um, H and S. Is it H? Not H and S. That's the bakery. H and H. H and H. That's trying to find like the shorts and stuff like that that we can get. C note printed on them and everything. It, mm -hmm. it just so I just kind of let it go. Okay, you know, I had some friends that wanted to continue it mm -hmm. or whatever, and I just like humbly bowed out, like, yo, y'all got it, mm -hmm. do your thing. Yeah, I see that, yo, like, I read this book called Who Moved My Cheese. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And I knew, like, at that moment, 
I needed to be on to the next thing to right. search for the next thing. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. And um, that's kind of how I that's where my BTSC role starts. I remember when you had the um, postcards. Yeah, yeah. With, with the, the like, photo shoot. Was you on one? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Dave was on one. Yeah, yeah. Dave was yeah. on one. I, it was a couple of dudes on there. One. It was definitely a couple of dudes on there. So, um, I remember that, and um, actually, me and Chris we Landry photo- was talking about because yeah, yeah. he was in Frostburg, and yeah. he, like he still got the pictures on his Facebook when he yeah. got the zip up joints. And yeah, all that, the ones with I the, wish uh, I still had some. You know, yeah, I, I always talk about. I didn't really take because this time I was in, I was going to the ninth grade. I was in the ninth, tenth grade, so I ain't take a lot of pictures around that area, even myself. And I, yeah. I wish I did. But I, matter of fact, I got, I'm gonna show you the picture. I got a picture with Chris. I had the long sleeve one. Yeah. The white one with the black C note across yeah. right here. Yeah, the big Yo, you don't remember, there. like, you guys are fly. Like, you was always a slick dude, yo. Like, Thank you know what I'm saying? So you buying it, I'm like, oh, I know we're gonna get some yeah, stuff. I was on, man. You what? Go rock it. And I'll, then, go ahead. And then I, I always tell Larry this. Like, I, I like Larry, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Larry's yeah. my guy uh, from Huey, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, my cousin, yeah. And, I remember Larry came through the Ceno store with this eight ball jacket, leather, leather jacket, jacket on. Yeah, yeah. And like, yo, he he's the same Larry was then. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got yeah. his bravado, uh, yeah. but he cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he was always determined to know exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, he's still right. that way to this day, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, I, and I, right. I, I, I had just had dinner with him here the other night. Yeah. And I respect him, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, give me your opinion on this. Check this out. I'm about to I'm trying this out. I want you to give me your opinion on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, like I even tell Larry, I said, bro, order me. I said, bro, I just want to support. When mm-hmm. something comes in, just save me a large of it. Mm-hmm. Just put it in. I'll grab it when I come. Yeah, that's real. And Larry, but Larry so much, he like, no, I wanted to. Come. I want you to come get it. Yeah. Like, I, like he has Check an affinity yeah. for his product yeah, yeah, and his yeah, customer yeah, interaction. Yeah. And, and he ain't gonna break it. And for he's nobody. not gonna break it for yeah, nobody. Yeah, even yeah. though I say, oh, put my credit card on file. Just right, right. <laughs> no. And I respect the man yeah, for that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, uh, but yo, y'all used to have. Not used to y'all hella style, you know what I mean? Y'all guys came down and and um and, and, and water stuff, man. And, that was my shit. Man. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you had one that was baby blue and like burgundy, and I had yeah, the yeah, Ivan Dells. It had the strip to go yeah, on. Yeah, the strip. The and Adidas, I had the, the Adidas, Adidas yep. like Ivan Dells went yep. perfect. I didn't even know if you made it for them, but I already yep. had the yep. shoes. Yep. So I, I wasn't like, getting those too. I was going crazy for that. I said, I gotta do yep. that. Yep, I, I got, got the, I got yeah. those too. And then that we was had, my thing, yeah. we had one that was like that was sky blue and was it red? It was another color. And what's the dude that played tennis? Um, that had Adidas. Um, Not nice Stan Smith. No, not the Stan Smith. Um, not the I've not I've the ones I'm talking about. You won't say it. I'm pronouncing his first name wrong. You probably pronounce that's a tennis name. shoe though. That might be the same one I'm thinking about. You yeah. just might be saying the name wrong. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. Out. I forgot you said. It. Yvonne Walkers or is it? I don't know, but or I know something what you're like talking that. About. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we're talking about the same shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know that was the era that like when. We used to spawn, so like giving back has always been something that we've done. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I get into it with BTSC kids and all that other stuff, mm. but we would sponsor AAU basketball teams okay. to go play basketball. Right. Like, we had our own BNBL AAU team. Mm-hmm. Not AAU, our own BNBL team. Okay. Team Sino. Okay. And that was thanks to my dude Rolo. Uh-huh. And kids would play we would provide them team see no jerseys we'll put some money up so they could go travel mm-hmm. they could eat and stuff like that yo on that team mm-hmm. will barton okay tony barton uh, josh selby oh man <laughs> like like yo these yeah, kids no played ones. in memphis and canvas <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. will is still in the nba nba yeah like i i tell will every time i see you i said yo you're in the nba because of me <laughs> <laughs> I, I just i'm just joking around with it but like yeah. literally he was on our team C Note team. Right. And we used to get them gear and everything. That's mm-hmm. all because of Rolo. I didn't know them like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Rolo put that together. Right. And um and then I would give clothes to group homes and stuff like that. Like right. stuff we couldn't sell, you know, we would just yeah, donate really. it to the group homes. Yeah, and then cool. I wound up getting a job at a group home. Okay. So like when sales are low, like it's a sales business and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I told myself I wouldn't get back into a sales business. Mm-hmm. Here we are in a sales <laughs> business. Um yeah. it's different though, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, different aspect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and my infrastructure, and it's different, yeah. and in so many ways. Right. But um, I would work at the group home um, for Jamote, 
And I, I would think do I like, remember that. And I would do like overnight shifts okay. there. And then I would come to the store. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up getting a job at my boy Lamont and my other guy, Larry, a company working as a mentor. Okay. So I would do overnights, the mentor, and run a store and go to school. Okay. okay. So literally I had school, my own business, a mentoring company I was working at, and a and a and a uh, overnight Grind group it. home. Grind three it. jobs. Yeah, three jobs, two jobs, my business and my school. Right. Okay. Okay. You grind. Yeah. Yeah. It's just oh, different. It's yeah, just, yeah, when people yeah. say, when people tell me, like, I know you might be busy, but you're not that, mm, you have no idea. Yeah. We're, we don't speak the same language. Right, right. And the same language ain't currency. It's not like, people will say that when, when they, they kind of assume that you're talking about, like, money mm -hmm. when you talk about those things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about money one bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm talking about the level of understanding of what it takes to do something exactly. or the same work ethic. Exactly. It's not the same. Right, right. Oh, I know you must be, but if I was you, no, you wouldn't because you don't get it. Exactly. You don't understand the level of responsibility that comes along right. with stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, I had those jobs, and that's kind of how I could wind up getting into doing mentoring services, mm -hmm. started working with kids mm -hmm. from a health perspective, mm -hmm. and then that's kind of how. What was your major at Morgan? So you want to ask something funny? So my major at Eastern Shore was fashion. Okay. For two weeks. <laughs> the one of the, after the first week they told us how much fashion merchandisers make mm -hmm. and I said yes I'm changing my major okay this is not gonna happen I ain't going for I that. am not yeah. going for that my, like <laughs> what I want in life doesn't align with that yeah. salary yeah you know what I'm saying so I'm yeah. like oh, I'm gonna go work somewhere different mm -hmm. I mean I'm gonna get a different so I got in the business major okay so when I got the Morgan my major was business okay um and yo but Issa Show wound up producing Great fashion people, yeah. Like Ducky, Ducky. Yeah. Ducky I, was up I didn't there even. When he was up there. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know Ducky went mm -hmm. to Morgan and tell my uh, my goddaughter's mother, Taika and, and Eddie. Yeah. They were like, she was like, yeah, Ducky was a yeah, best friend. I was like, I was like, yo, I had yeah. no idea. Like, oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's doing great things. Yeah, big things. Yeah. Things. So I'm like, well, it worked out for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Me, it just wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't right, gonna be me. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wound up going to Morgan, getting my undergrad in business. Okay. Um, and when I started working at the group homes, um, and, uh, still had C-Note, my buddies, um, no, 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 I'm saying it wrong. So I went to undergrad, I got my undergrad in Morgan, Morgan in business. Mm -hmm. I was working as a mentor and then I got a job as a one-on-one -on -one at Florence Patel. Okay. Uh, it was a non-public school, it was an alternative school, basically. You get put out of everywhere, and you got to learn a disability. Then you go there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had like an IP and uh -huh. everything else. So I was a one-on-one -on -one working there. No, I was a teacher assistant. I'm sorry. I was a teacher assistant. I applied as a teacher assistant. They hired me. I remember I made thirty-five thousand, thirty thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People are like, yeah, they got made forty-five hundred. Actually, no, it wasn't thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Thirty thousand five hundred. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I was yeah. like, it was it was a decent job. I was like, yeah. all right, well, you know, cool. Right. But I still was doing my mentoring stuff on a, working for two other organizations, the companies on yeah, the side. Checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diversify my income. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, which is very, very important. I had um, a similar. Definitely had a similar path. I talk about this on the show a lot too. I, I, because I went, I was sure. And I realized later on that I didn't even have a major. That's how, because you know out there, you don't be focused. You're just like party. Party, man. Because listen, it What's was your me. major, yo? Me. <laughs> Taj Jim on a Friday night. That's my major. That's all we was doing. Look, it was me, Larry, and, and like 10 other my other homeboys from here. Yeah. So we was out there just playing. And once I, that's when reality kicked in for me. And I was like, I got to get out of here. And I transferred. I went to UB. And I graduated. But I, and real quick, I'm going to just share because it's similar to what you were saying. My thing was... I went to, um, when I went to UB and I graduated, this why exposure is so important. Like you said, all the exposure you mm -hmm. got. My idea of college, because I didn't have any males around me that went to college, my idea was if I get a degree, I get a job wherever. Mm -hmm. Found out the hallway, that's not how it go. Yeah. I ended up getting an internship. You know, I was in the, I'm always still in the music, but I was in the music heavy and I ended up getting an internship with Sony to end my last semester at UB. Oh, so I, I was doing all the work here, but they gave us like a few days up in New York. I stayed out there for a few okay. days. They got met a lot of people stuff. Yeah, so um, I ended up going to Step by Step. Oh, step Joey. by Step was my first job. Joey. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Malik put me on, me and Todd. 
Now that put me on with that. I did that for a lot of years. I went to Brighter Stronger Foundation. All this was mental one on one. I went to uh, uh, Shepherd Pratt School mm -hmm. um, for the Fulbright School, working with the artists and kids. Yep. yep. All that. So I did it, and I worked in a homeless shelter. I did all the same. That it reminded me of everything you was doing, but all that stuff that you know don't pay well. But the the um, what you get back in return. Especially when you're helping people, you see the progress. Yeah, and that's the only shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes into when you got into the year, your field. Because I remember this. I remember we was down Artscape. Mm -hmm. And you had the kids with you. And you had mm -hmm. them all in the snowman t-shirts. Mm -hmm. It was like four or five kids. You yeah. like, hey, these my kids. I'm mental. And yeah. I was like, okay. That's what's up. And I always remember that when I got into them. I was like, I remember Chris was doing this shit. Yeah. So, tell me. So, what, what part of that was, was, was working with them kids? So, that's probably when I was working out that number of... Uh, I don't know. I think I probably was working under under another company. Okay. At that point, you know, okay. and you had was in a Jeezy Snowman T-shirt uh, down. There. Yeah, <laughs> when you was a, when you could be a mentor, there was it wasn't as mental health driven. Uh -huh. You know, it was more about social activities, okay. building. Okay. You know, a lot of these kids may be coming home from juvie, mm -hmm. and they need to stay out of that. You need to help them get a job, yeah. provide a level of exposure, but also you know reinforcing them with some positive uh, reinforcements like going out to do some fun stuff. Right. So, um, um, but that's kind of where C-Note happened. Okay. So I was working at the non-public school and um, um, I wound up working at my, I was with my boys agency and then one of the other dudes, Larry Carroll, he passed away. Uh, changing directions, he passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know what? I can do this. Okay. No, no, that's not what happened. I, I knew I could do it. Mm -hmm. But my buddy, the co the co the coach of the basketball team there, and I was the assistant coach. Mm -hmm. We um, both worked at um, Changing Directions. Okay. And he came to me and said, "Yo, Merlin Choices, which was the company that provided contracts for everybody." Mm -hmm. He said, "Listen, Merlin Choices is giving out." Contracts to individual contractors now. Okay. So you ain't even got to work with those companies no more. Okay. You can just be an independent contractor and they'll refer you clients to work with them directly. Okay. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. But I'm one person. Mm -hmm. Like, if I start a company, mm -hmm. then they can hire my company and I can hire people and now we can service more people. Okay. So you're so, always forward thinking. Yo, I, I'm blessed, man. <laughs> and so we, uh, so I started that. I'm like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. Wrote this proposal up, went to Maryland Choices. They gave me the contract because they already knew me because I was already working with some of their clients, but through other corporations, okay. other companies. Uh -huh. So they knew the quality of work that I was providing. Mm -hmm. So when I said I was doing my own thing, they were like, perfect, we'll refer to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm young. Like, I, I'm starting to age a little bit now, mm -hmm. look a little older because it's weight. What year was what year was this when you when you was like what you two thousand two thousand eight. So you was like what, twenty this mid twenties? Two thousand eight, eighty three, twenty five. Okay. So um twenty five started um uh, wow. Yeah. So that's that's, that's an age, right? So that's, 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 that's that's when I started BTSC. Okay. At twenty five. Okay. So okay. this year we're was this two thousand one? Twenty. So we're thirteen years in. Okay. Okay. So um, um, yeah, they gave me my first contract and within like three months, I had half of the clientele mm -hmm. that they serviced in my program. Okay. The other half of the clientele was divided between like 20 other providers uh -huh. that they had. Right. The dude that told me about it mm -hmm. wound up becoming my first employee. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, so it's, it's two, and that's no shade at him. Yeah, There's just two type of people in this world. Yeah. Somebody's going to talk about what they're going to do, yeah, some people and somebody's going to get it done. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm yeah. one of those people that's going to get it done. We're not right. providing a bunch of excuses. We're not just discussing, oh, this would be so cool if we did. Boom, boom. Yeah. Because by the time you're talking about, like, oh, this would be cool, I'm like, I'm right. implementing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You stay in that fantasy you know world. Somebody else going to do it. Yo, you're going to say, I wish I would have. You know, we at my company, we develop with our 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 process our decision making process strategy is mm -hmm. we got incubation operation implementation and evaluation right so in, in incubation you can think as big as you want mm -hmm. there's nobody to hold you back from your thoughts because mm -hmm. the worst thing is when you're a creative person and you're a thought leader people are telling you why you can't do that picking it apart 
as you're still dreaming it. Yeah. You let that go, so you have input. You have incubation where you just growing the idea. Mm -hmm. Operation is when now when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it, mm -hmm. and we figure out like, all right, what works, what doesn't work, mm -hmm. how does this go, what does this cost, what does the scale look like, who do we need, mm -hmm. finances, whatever. Right. Where's the opportunity really there? Is the squeeze really worth? Is the juice really worth the squeeze? Uh -huh. Then if it's yes, and that's where the idea get killed or proceed. Then when it proceeds, we go to implementation. So we implement the plan that we came up with in operation. Right. And then we evaluate to see if everything went working. according to plan, if it was working, was it worth it? Because what did we win? What did we lose? Mm -hmm. All of that type of stuff. Yeah. So um, again, being a creative person, I was just I was, you know, just thinking always forthcoming, I mean always forward thinking, mm -hmm. um, and everything. So yeah, that's how BTSC got started and it started off of a void. I used to work at these other organizations and I see that they wasn't really helping kids with career and employment style stuff. And, um, you know, just, they were like babysitting kids and like just just chilling with them with no specific purpose. A lot of, I don't mean to cut you over, what I found out in these businesses like that, a lot of them go for that check. A lot yeah. of them don't really be caring about them. them don't kids, bring me man. up in the conversations. Yeah. Not talking to you. Yeah, yeah, Understand yeah. when people will be like, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Bring me up in the conversations with the the Johns Hopkins, the Kennedy Kriegers, right. the University of Maryland. Right. Those people. Cause don't it, bring me up with the people yeah, that just who aren't. I'm not even saying just started because they may have a heart and they may have a true, passion for true. it. But which is different. Like, yeah. And that's not even financially different. Yeah. That's just level of quality of service yeah. and focus different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're dealing with lives. Yes. I mean, like, as people no, look bro, at like, I tell people, this. I tell people all the time, like, this is not a hustle. Like, no, no. people may see yeah. outcomes that my company is able to provide. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether they're financial outcomes, whether they're service outcomes, or whether it's things that I'm afforded the ability to do as an owner who owns a successful business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. see, like, I'm like, no, like, like my dad, um, he went to surgery. He had surgery and it kind of like semi-paralyzed him in certain places. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like his arm is a little, you know, stiff. Mm -hmm. um, and I always reference this. Do I want, because psychiatric rehabilitation, which is a program that a lot of people have, um, it's it's called psychiatric rehabilitation. Yeah. So it's to rehabilitate like, your your brain and your and your performance and your and your and your cognitive and, and those behaviors, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So why are we playing basketball? Right. What does that have to do with something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I but I always reference it. So therapy, you break your arm, you go see a psych you go see a doctor, they tell you your arm is broken. Mm -hmm. They prescribe you something. It's kind of like the, psychi the psychiatrist. Right. You go back to your primary, you go back to your doctor, you see, get, you get seen consistently mm -hmm. to check up and make sure everything is going right to provide you some interventions and all that other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like your therapist. Mm -hmm. Then you go to what? Physical rehabilitation mm -hmm. to learn how to use your arm again. Right. Right. That's psychiatric rehabilitation. You learn how to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not out here trying to teach people how to be track stars. Right. You know what I'm saying? Basketball yeah. stars. Um, go to the park and hit home runs or we're just going to the movies. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? There, there needs to be some significant reason for whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what we started BTS. BTSC, at that moment, we were just a mental health company, mentoring company. Mm -hmm. But I started developing treatment plans. Okay. So when your client was referred, when a client was referred to us, we're doing ABC for this specific reason and here are the outcomes that we attempted to make. Okay. Like, so it was easy for us to transition into mental health yeah. because we were already doing that. Exactly. But you're talking about somebody giving somebody a referral to mentally work with them. Mm -hmm. Somebody that has experienced trauma, somebody that has experienced, dep that's dealing with depression, mm -hmm. anxiety. And you mean to tell me I'm going to take them to the play park. basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Let's figure this thing out. Like, yo, like, yeah. that's like my dad with his arm 
Somebody put him on a tread. He go to physical rehab and they put him on a treadmill. Yeah, they ain't got Why is he on a treadmill? Yeah. His legs are okay. Right. It's right. his arm. Yeah, let's work on his arm. Let's make sure that the goals are specific right. to the right. knee. Right. Real shit. That's like real. that's like we're different. Yeah. Like we're. I mean, we're a full fledged clinic though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. we're an organization. Like uh -huh. you know, we facilities throughout the state of Maryland. Uh -huh. You know, like we we are legit. Like yeah. we're 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 not a. BS organization, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, so when people be like, Chris, man, I want to talk to you because you know I'm trying to work with the kids. I'm trying to do A, B, and C. Boop. Man. We're not even having that convo, bro. Right. Right. When you want to work with the kids and do what? Yeah. You want to teach them how to do what? You want to take a whip? No. Man. This is not a hustle. Right. This is, like, yo, this is somebody's health. Yeah. They like on the line. They are like really could change the path of somebody whole life. Exactly. Really Imagine your 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 wife go to your girl go to her OBGYN and he like yeah you want to play ping pong? Yeah. No. She like what? Right. I'm having contractions. Right. right. What do you mean do I want to play ping pong? <laughs> right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Like get out of here. Yeah. yeah. Like that's what that's what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's you know, and that's how BTSC was built. Mm -hmm. You know we have an office in Baltimore. Prince George's County, Frederick County, Washington County, and we got a, um, some more stuff happening. Um, but that kind of leads me. In. So before I talk about the mental health thing, um, like the mental plus health care, where I was talking about how we make it urban and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But one year it snowed really bad, right? Mm -hmm. I will always give away stuff. Like, just I'm just a I'm a giving person. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that's it's it's very easy to see why hospitality yeah. is right in my bag. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, this is people like oh, a restaurant is so different. Like, I've been curating events yeah. and experiences, yeah. the curating experiences. You know, whether it's the experience you get when you walk through the front door of our mental health facility and how people greet you, mm -hmm. and what were what your steps of service and what it looks like and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's stuff I've been doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but one year it snowed really bad. Um, might have been 2013, 2014 or something like that. 2013, 2014. And I was stuck in the house. Couldn't go anywhere. It was, I was watching The Wire. Mm -hmm. Started back at season one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was really as great as The Wire is. It's a great show. One of the, it's the best show to me. A lot of people say and, that. And, a lot and of don't say mention that. that snowfall stuff to me. It's, it's, it's not. <laughs> no, you definitely can't compare. It's no, too early it's, for it's, snowfall. It's, it's not. Compare you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so, so um, uh, I was at home and watching a wire. And as true as it is, as great as the show it is, it's very true depiction of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of these low social economical conditions and, you know, Poverty, mm -hmm. they show you poverty in its truest form. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? The substance abuse, they show you that in its truest form. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wow. Like it was, a, it was, it was a. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't lived on Alameda mm -hmm. in a long time. You know what I'm saying? And I hadn't had. To, I worked with kids in those situations. Yeah. You know, but I would do my job and I would leave and I would, you know, go mm -hmm. home and. Mm -hmm. Do whatever, you know, start trying to raise my kids and stuff, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you was able to reflectively look at it and be like, yo, we're providing great mental health services to people, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, these people got it. When we leave, yeah. they are still living in these same environments right. that are perpetuating the trauma. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exacerbating, adding so much to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People being killed down at, and I said killed because mm -hmm. that's what happened <laughs> in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They getting killed and they still gotta live through that. Right. They the mom still ain't got food to feed her it's family at everyday eight. Everyday life for them. Yo, everyday life. So yeah. I was like, man, we gotta help improve their conditions outside of just coming in the house and providing mental health services. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how BTSC Cares got started. Okay. It's like, yo, BTSC, we care. Right. So we started a nonprofit organization, became 501c3. Mm -hmm. And we would just donate to these families. Like we would sponsor a family each month, mm -hmm. provide the Ashley and Jay are gonna laugh when they even hear this, but you know, I tell the story all the time, like there was a family of like eight that didn't have a kitchen table. Mm -hmm. No table in the house. Mm -hmm. Where do they eat dinner at? Where do they do homework at? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so we provided them dining room sets and stuff like that, gift cards, food, give them gift card set up opportunities for them to go out and do respite activities. 
So whether it's bowling or something, they get to go out the house to do. Yeah. So they can have some family some time. Fun. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, we did that. Rents, light bills. We did thanks. We still do Thanksgivings. Um, turkey drives. We pro pro not only do we give away turkeys, we also provide Thanksgiving dinners. Mm -hmm. We do. I met. I linked. That's how I linked up with Sanjay, and we started our big give back toy drive. Okay. We have a happy hour. We used to have it at Mount Washington Tavern. Mm -hmm. We raise all. We get all these toys and everything for our happy hour. Mm -hmm. People bring a toy. Donations. And they. That. We give it. To, we 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 rate. We identify these families. We then have these families come in to dinner at a different restaurant. Mm -hmm. And when they walk in, they see all these toys that's for them. They had no idea. Mm -hmm. And they go nuts. You know what I'm saying? The mom start crying. And she's like, I don't know how I would have been able to provide this yeah. for them. Right. All this other stuff. Exposure activities. We take them on field trips mm -hmm. and everything else like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's we got. That's how BTSC Cares mm -hmm. got started. Right. BTSC Cares never got a grant ever mm -hmm. until last year. Dang. So if we started it in 2013, 14, last year was 2020. Six seven years, years, six seven, years or whatever, six to seven years uh -huh. of operating was all self-funded by me. That's impressive. You know what I'm saying? That's impressive. I salute you. Self-funded. We that so I, I give back in so many ways that yeah. people don't know about. You know what I'm saying? They like can never discredit that. Yo, like they can never discredit that. Somebody was like, yo, PTS, <laughs> like uh Black Swan, you got a dress code, you racist or whatever. I'm like, yeah. Racist, <laughs> me like right. bro. That's, that's, name somebody that has name 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 five people that's done more for yeah, African that's, Americans locally. Yeah. That's not a politician and all that other stuff. Right, right. And you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. What are you that's talking serious, about? Because a lot of people don't facts. know that. A lot of people Yo, don't we, know that. we wrote Black Lives Matter outside of City Hall. We, I'll get into our whole my whole resume. It's like. Yeah. Bro, y'all got the wrong right. guy. Yeah, definitely. Yo, I like to dress slick and fly and earn yeah. than the next yeah. urban dude. So I put standards in place that I don't even meet half the time. Right. So I got to get myself together and become elevated just yeah. so I can come to my own restaurant. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, so like, yo, that program, we, we got our first grant for the Baltimore Ravens mm -hmm. uh, last year, and then we got picked up a few other grants. And now we still, I made, I set up for the company that people can give out of their paycheck. Okay. Like to be an employee there, you gotta donate if it's a penny right. or something, you have to donate some part of your check to the nonprofit. Right. Okay. That's every real. paycheck. That's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. So now we got an in house giving. So we right. so they all give to um to BTSC Cares. Okay. So now we're able to do a lot more. That's just like sick. like literally last year, you know, we paid we had an art program and we paid for art um Kid Balloon mm -hmm. did art for them, for, mm -hmm. for kids, you know what I'm saying? Taught them how to express themselves mm -hmm. in a therapeutic way okay. using art. Okay. Um, we paid for coding. Yo, some of this stuff, I don't even know. Because we, you know, we, we hired an executive director, Jan Desmond Peters, mm -hmm. from the Black Mental Health Alliance, mm -hmm. who comes in and runs our nonprofit and all the other stuff that we're doing. Okay. So we pay for coding classes mm -hmm. The kids at Harlem Park Elementary. Mm -hmm. I've never seen these kids a day in my life. Mm -hmm. They probably never know me. Mm -hmm. I probably would never know them. Hopefully mm -hmm. I'll read about them yeah. in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But we pay for coding classes mm -hmm. for them. That's serious. Yo, coding for That's elementary serious. school students so they can learn how to do coding. Yeah, they need that early exposure. A exactly. Exposure. By the Teaching time in them, high school, they gonna be yo, Microsoft, Google, all that. You know who taught them the coding classes? My homeboy who works at Hopkins and was doing IT. And I was like, bro, you realize they're subbing you out to go to University of Maryland and do IT and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start your own company, bro? Yeah. And do it on the side. Right. You know, I understand Hopkins provides a lot of, you know, great resources for mm -hmm. its employees, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But why don't you start, why don't you do something on the side and do that? And he was like, yo, but I need help. I need to know how to, yo, come down to office tomorrow. We'll put it together. Okay. Yo, you put it together. I said, yo, put this thing together. I'll be your first contract. Boom! I gave him his first contract. He's still, he's still. I'm still one of his clients That's to provide like IT capability and oversight for our stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then now he takes this this model that we built together, mm -hmm. and now he goes to other businesses and does the same thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. And then he even grew his program outside of just trying to provide services to people. That now he he came up with a, uh, a curriculum mm -hmm. that they teach. Um, it's called EG 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 squared, um, and they teach these coding classes to kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This ain't mental health. Right. So again, some people try to provide these things 
as way of mental health. Yeah. It's like, yo, somebody that has depression is not coming for coding. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. While it's good, right. while I see the benefit what you're trying to do, that's the stick this is healthcare. Yeah. This is some, this is additional to that. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So that's how we do it through our nonprofit mm -hmm. and I pay for those type of programming and stuff like that. Like we do a lot of stuff in the community. You would need to have a podcast with Jan just for her to tell you yeah. all like the give back that. work that that we do. We have a podcast at work. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I guess this kind of leads to the mental plus healthcare thing. Yeah. So we're riding along, we're providing great mental health services. Mm -hmm. Um and that's when I was like, yo, we need to in the urban community there's this stigma with mental health. Mm -hmm. People be like, yo, you got mental health. Yo, I ain't crazy. What are you yeah, trying to say? Exactly. So, 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 so. Exactly, it's like, exactly. no. Real shit. Yo, dealing with mental health don't mean yeah, you're crazy. Right, you're right. It means right. you're real. Mm -hmm. It means you're uncrazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy people will be somebody that's unaffected by it. Exactly. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I use that crazy word humbly, yeah. you know what I'm saying, passively. Yeah. But that's in respectfully. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in a boy. You know, but like, literally, like, it's, 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 you would be it'd be something wrong with you that if you didn't experience after after watching somebody getting shot in the head you weren't yeah. you weren't traumatized yeah. by that in some capacity because we think it's okay because it's happens every day yo that's not it's normal not okay. no, that's not, not normal not no not at all. so not at all. the same way you go through a relationship and I know you probably experience this a lot you know girls break your heart <laughs> Go ahead. You know <laughs> and you depressed and you hurt by it. You throw your you throw your Johnny Gill on and your R B and you singing in the shower and crap. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. yo, the same way people go to they can go to therapy for that. Like yeah, yo, they need yeah. to get over that. Right, right. The same way relationships and spouses and marriages, they go through tough times mm -hmm. and they get the beefing. You know what I'm saying? They go to therapy for that. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with therapy. At all. Yo, if so they help the best thing to happen to a lot of yo, people. Yo, it's somebody true. that can help you understand what you went through and how it impacts you and how it's manifesting in your life. Yeah. Negatively. And now you can learn how to improve that. Yeah. Bro, like like I'm not saying I'm the best person by any stretch of the imagination, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when I went to therapy and I learned about emotional IQ mm -hmm. and what I and what that allowed me to do is I might not agree with something, mm -hmm. I might not have saw it that way. Mm -hmm. But I was able to develop empathy for it. Okay. Changed my life, changed my relationships, changed yeah. everything. Like I don't get mad at people of course in certain ways. I understand well that and learning human behavior okay. in college. I, so I wound up going back to Morgan. Mm. I'm put a pin in that. Mm. I wound up going back to Morgan to get my masters in social work. Okay. My buddy James was like, yo, you should go back to Morgan. You should get your social work degree. We all here. Mm -hmm. It's lit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I ain't going back to get no degree. Yeah. I own my own company. I'm making more than the professors. Right. Being ignorant. You know uh, what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, he's like, all right. I went back, got my degree, got my licensure. And then uh, I became the president of the School of Social Work National Alumni Association. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I got, I got my... <laughs> so how you going to that? Huh? How did you go after that? They they asked they you. Oh, me. Oh, okay. They see all the work that I was doing. Okay. And the connectivity I had with people. Man, and the business, my business. You know what I'm saying? They was like, "Yo, would you?" Dr. Daniels was like, "Can you bring your talents over here and help okay. us with this?" Okay. You know, and um, you know, I resigned recently because me and some of the some of the staff at in the School of Social Work didn't see eye to eye on how we should go about things mm -hmm. and what was needed. They were like impediments. Mm -hmm. And the agenda that I had to increase enrollment, um, diversity, um, and stuff like that. So, you know, I respectfully declined. Okay. Um, you know, so, I mean, I re resigned. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was, a, I was a president of the School of Social Work mm -hmm. National Alumni. So she asked me to be an adjunct teacher, professor, okay. <laughs> and everything else. Um, would you do that? No. <laughs> like, would, you, would you be like, would you ever be the mayor? No. <laughs> Negative. I love exactly what I do. Right, right. I don't want that scrutiny and that oversight, okay. that accountability. Got you, got you. And, got you. you know, and... You know, who knows about the adjunct club, but not right now. Yeah, yeah I'm too busy and too yeah. invested yeah. in what I'm doing. You I know understand. what I'm saying? To, to do because you want to get at your full attention. Yeah, and if I'm not giving this my full attention, I want to get my kids my full attention. Right, right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Got, got I don't want to run my I'm, my resume is golden. Yeah, I want to make sure that my kids that 
now the time that I got, I'm giving to my kids right. to grow them, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not just continue to lay on my yeah, resume yeah, yeah, and lay it on yeah, while, yeah. while I'm neglecting them. At that's real. That's your shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how shit. You know what I mean? I've done enough. Okay. And if I invested them in the right way with everything that I've done, they their upside is higher than mine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um, Roll out the ring so, the so, yeah, so, all right, now coming back, mm. we, um, like, no, you're not crazy. So I'm like, all right, I want to develop it. I want people to understand that mental health is cool. Mm -hmm. So I say, yo, what we're going to wind up doing is start this mental health plus camp, this mental plus healthcare campaign where we attach the head to the body. Okay. People know if I break my finger, I'm going to the doctors. Yeah. But if I feel some type of way, I'm not going nowhere for it. Right. Because it's in the head, not, yeah. not physical. Right. It's, so it's like, all right, let's 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 connect the head to the body. So mm -hmm. mental plus healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, it's just like yo, we're gonna make we're gonna make social we're gonna make this mental health urban. We're gonna touch people and, uh, and connect with that. And make sure the sound bites don't come out wrong. We're gonna connect with people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. In a way in which they're used to receiving information. Uh -huh. So whether it's on the radio, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on YouTube, all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna appeal to them in that way. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know the, the, like our relationships, like we did. Um, I did uh, a music conference with Rico Love. Okay, you know, Grammy, I remember so, that. I remember Grammy Award Instagram. winner, Grammy Award winner Rico Love was uh, Charlemagne there too. That's another one. Okay, okay. So Rico was my okay. guy. He was doing a music conference here, uh -huh. and I came on one of the sponsors, and we just you know talked to people about mental health and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And I happened to be out the country that when it was here, so I didn't get to come speak at it and all that other stuff. Okay. Um, but we still paid for like a hundred tickets. For students to attend and everything else mm -hmm. and shout out to rico for that man yeah. and he's my guy still mm -hmm. um and that relationship built to so many mm -hmm. so then we wound up um bringing charlemagne the guard here because mm -hmm. he had his book shook ones mm -hmm. you know i read um, that too Good you know what I'm yeah mm -hmm. so i was you know a part of my role as morgan the school of social work president uh, and my work as a mental health for this like yo, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this event, and I could have did it anywhere, but I did it at Morgan. Morgan okay. Helped us gave passes away to social work students. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And people that wanted to come, and we interviews. We made it edutainment. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Providing education. education. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we had my man DJ Quicksilver was opening up like mixing and beat drama. Mm -hmm. Then um, uh, we had Kawani um, who did like spoken word. Okay. Um, with the um the, the dudes that was on Ellen doing the drumming Drums. situation, okay, okay. they opened up, you know. So it was a whole event, like. Mm -hmm. And then we interviewed um Charlemagne, and we were talking about um, mental health and everything. Mm -hmm. Then I wound up doing a um event with um the Grammys. Okay. So we got a relationship with the recording the recording academy. Okay. We have a okay. partnership with them. That's what's up. The Grammys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, shout out to Jerry L. And we, um, we, he brought some artists mm -hmm. down and we at the Motor House, we had a conversation about mental health and music industry mm -hmm. and about like how those two things intersect. Mm -hmm. We had like a private mm -hmm. VIP um, meet and greet at our office where okay. we were just hanging out, doing that, had that catered. Mm -hmm. um, then we have a relationship with the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. With Hayden Hurst, number one draft pick from like two, three years ago, mm -hmm. where we did a school tour. We went around the different schools. We went to Poly, we went to Coppin, St. Francis, and the school in Hagerstown. And we had conversations about mental health. Okay. And those conversations were about like his story because he struggled with mental health. Okay. And basically, we provide this level of exposure. For these kids about that so they can be like man i'm not only going through this by myself yeah, yeah, so maybe yeah. i should do therapy yeah and then hey this organization paid for us to provide therapy okay to those students that's what's up you know what i'm saying that's and up. then we did a conference the first like urban mental health conference in dc with taraji p henson okay like me and taraji partnered to do this conference and mm -hmm. tracy which is Taraji, she runs a nonprofit mm -hmm. for taraji Mm -hmm. And um, we we partnered together to do that. Like Kaiser was supposed to be the partner, and it kind of like fell out. Uh -huh. 
and then we became a partner. Okay, it was like, step right in. what? That was perfect. You know, so um, <laughs> we did it down in D.C. Had people from all across the country mm -hmm. coming to speak about mental health. You get CEUs, mm -hmm. all of that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we, we hosted the You Got This Lounge. So every all the celebrities came through there. Me and Jade and my partner, mm -hmm. we interviewed them. And, we you know, we talked to them about mental health. So okay. you're talking about... Uh, Morris Chestnut, um, Jennifer Lewis, Taraji, mm -hmm. McKissick and McKissick, who are like these real estate, these women real estate developers in New York. They built the Barclays Center. Um, just all these different people. This was in DC? Yeah. Okay. Came through, star studded event. Uh, Charlemagne came through. Um, and we went to Capitol Hill. Okay. to advocate about suicides and stuff like that uh -huh. so taraji so taraji is up talking to congress mm -hmm. congress <laughs> like yo <laughs> taraji's up talking to congress yeah it's it's charlemagne um tracy uh -huh. me and then jan right behind taraji wow. you know what wow. i'm saying and she's talking to congress like the, the 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 ladies that Trump called the the the, the Muslims or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. like we had a, a VIP meeting greet with them. These are the people that we were speaking okay. to. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's serious. That's serious. And I'm, I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> Can't call it nothing. Yeah. They don't know yeah. nothing. They're gonna learn that today. Yeah, like, 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 they're gonna learn that. Okay. Can't can't give them nothing because it because the proof is in the pudding. Like, I, I, proof is in, I don't have to speak on. I do the work. Yeah. You know the what I'm saying? Shows. Like I do. I can like Hov was talking about the NFL and he was like, I can account for every penny I spent yeah. on whatever, 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 and helping these communities. Yeah. Yeah. I can't account for every penny, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. We do so much that I'm not even aware of. Yeah. But literally, I know the work that we do. Right. You know, we did that to help individuals receive mental health services mm -hmm. and educate the providers. Okay. So the providers were coming to get trained on how yeah. to better service their right. clients. Right. Right. So it's like that's if you think about that. One person maybe can service 30 people, right? Yeah. So if we have 300 therapists coming, and you multiply that by 30 people, so what's that, like 900? I, I don't even know. And you're um, helping uh, other companies. Uh, uh, huh? You're helping other companies help their employees, so it's not no thing of I'm trying to be better or over top of everybody else. Oh, it's not a competition. It's us yeah. all helping each other. Exactly. Like, exactly. to a lot of these companies, I'm big bro. Yeah. Or or, or cousin, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, Something right. like that, like... Yeah. You know, like we can work together and develop. Like some of these, some of the other companies donated to the conference. Okay. You know that's what I'm saying? What's they up. might not have been a partner, but they donated that's to me up. because this is what I was doing. That's what's up. And that's what I told Taraji. I said, listen, I'm going to bring out these other mental health providers. I'm going to have them donate and they're going to come. They're going to buy a table mm -hmm. to come to the gala and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. Like, I am the person you need to work with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they, they bought into it and we delivered. That's what's up. You know that's what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's big, man. That's, yo, that's it's huge. Out of all your situations, do you feel like the, the mental health is the biggest? That's the biggest. Yo, it's the biggest in many ways. It's 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 our. Uh, it provides it provided like that's where I learned. I have over 300 employees, mm -hmm. and that's where I learned. It's a we provide services, but we're also a corporation. Okay. So the understanding and need of systems. Sustainable systems that can be replicatable. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's how you do your payroll, your mm -hmm. HR systems, mm -hmm. your onboard training, mm -hmm. you know, accounting, all of that other stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Understanding the need for systems and infrastructure came through that. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All of that all of that knowledge and everything and mm -hmm. came through that. And it's still there, you know? Yeah. And we're still honing it to this day. Um but yeah, that's 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 our that's 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 our thing, you know, and um, um, human behavior, understanding relationships, everything. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. that's our thing. And then like we still do, like I said, we wrote Black Lives. So like the dude Gata from um, the show with Dave, um, um, what's the dude Freaky Friday that did the song with Chris Brown? Um, um, I know a song. The white guy. Um, 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 he got the TV show, Dave. Yes. You talking about? Uh, I was about to say Ashton Rob, not Ashton Rob. He's uh, a rapper. Little Dicky. Little Dicky. Yeah, 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 yeah Little Dicky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, his one of his friends in real life is the dude Gatta. Okay. And so I interviewed Gatta about mental health. Mm -hmm. 
during quarantine, mm-hmm. when everybody was locked down, we paid, we started something, DJ Little Mike started something called Club Quarantine. Okay. No, was that DJ? That's on. D-Nice. That's D-Nice. Yeah. So, COVID Lounge. Okay. So, Mike had the COVID Lounge, and we were basically their sponsors okay. for the COVID Lounge because music also is a... Um, it's therapeutic. It's therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah, so we were able to... Um, um, we we sort of benefit and paying for that mm-hmm. to provide people an outlet and respite mm-hmm. when they're going through whatever they were going through. You right. know what I'm saying? COVID because it was a lot of times yeah. of uncertainty and everything else. Yeah. So we pay for that. Then we pay for quick did the same thing, and we pay for one of the quick sessions. I mean, quicks mix sessions and everything else as well. Mm-hmm. So we provided people those those things during COVID. Okay. Um, when everybody had to shelter in place and kids didn't have um, access to computers to go to school. We, we bought like over a hundred, um, I, I don't want to say a number mm-hmm. and be wrong. And somebody said, you didn't buy 200 computers. We bought a lot of computers. You know what I'm saying? We bought a lot of computers <laughs> yeah. and, and hotspots that we gave away to families okay. so they can have access for that and then also access to do telehealth right. um, with us and everything. Right. Um, then we painted Black Lives Matter after George Floyd died in front of City Hall. Mm-hmm. But as a way of expressing, using art as a way of therapy, mm-hmm. because people felt a lot of anger, a lot of trauma in that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we invited people out to come paint okay. as a way to express what you feel right. and to say Black Lives Matter. For the two years in a row, we've taken out full page ads in the Baltimore Sun mm-hmm. just to write about Juneteenth. Okay. People didn't even know what Juneteenth was yeah, last, last year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We wrote about Juneteenth, trauma, mm-hmm. and mental health. Okay. This year, we followed it up with um, a further ad about mental health. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That makes me think I need to um, call the dude from Baltimore Sun as well. Yeah, but, you know, we... Um, what's, um, what's, what's one of your, your, your greatest, like, even from when you was mentoring all, like, all, what's one of your greatest success stories from one of these kids or individuals? Family. Yo, so because I'll I tell you, I'll let you think. Oh, I got go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So we got a lot of awards. Mm-hmm. Like I got awarded by Casa Permanente, mm-hmm. um, Light Health and Wellness, Keys Gala. Mm-hmm. Like Light Health and Wellness is me and Elijah Cummins mm-hmm. getting an award together. Mm-hmm. Me and Elijah Cummins. That's this is before he died. Yeah, that's serious. Like we have a picture at the same gala being awarded together. Okay. Me, him, and the dude who invented HIV. Not wow. saying invented HIV, but he came up with the letters and the words HIV okay. and did all the research on HIV. Right. <laughs> Me, him, and Elijah Cummins are the recipients wow. of awards at this gala. <laughs> wow. Bro. Me saying this, I don't never take this stuff in. Yeah. Like, I don't get big headed. Yeah, yeah. I just go about the work and I do and I run with my head down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But now that I'm sitting in the back and saying that, I was like, <laughs> Elijah Cummins, me, and the dude who came up with the terminology and the research on HIV. Yeah. Got awarded together That's at the serious. same gala. That's serious. Wow. When was this? Three years ago. Okay. Um, Yeah, three years ago. And yeah, what was the award for? I was the Shining Star, something like that. Like the young person who was successful and they knew was going to continue to blaze the way. Okay. Um, got a lot of, got, got tons of awards. Mm-hmm. The most fulfilling, it's not even an award. It's, um, a, a, he, it's a kid named David Brown that I used to work with. I used to call him Big Diesel and everything. Like mm-hmm. he was non-published, I mean, he went to a level five school. Mm-hmm. Um, he was one of the kids that were in my actual program. So when I started my program, it was me, we started on 25th Street. I was about to ask you about that. We had, we had, had space room? in the basement. Oh, okay. We had a space in the basement before the room was stairs. Okay, okay. You talking about a, a Progressive? Where, that's where um, Nicole and all them was at? So we had a space across there first. Okay. I had a place in the basement, then we moved upstairs, then we partnered with Nicole and them to do that was my lead in the mental health as I was okay. building my program. Okay. Because um, I remember seeing you there one time. I was, I was our first male employee. My mother was our second, okay. our first female employee. Okay. She would work with some of the girls. I would work with the guys mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that's how it built. Mm-hmm. Um, but David Brown was one of the clients that I had. And, you know, he was rough, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
he would fight, he would be shooting. I mean, he was in the he was in the stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he lived down off of Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm -hmm. But a good kid. Okay. Good at heart. Mm -hmm. His mom worked a lot. She had like four kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, wasn't always home because she had to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she, you know, she did what she had to do to kind of provide for her family. Mm -hmm. I was mentoring David and ran into him recent, like a few years ago. Man, David got kids, he got a wife. Okay. He has a car, his own house. He has his own businesses. That's he owns two businesses. Damn, that's he does trucking and he owns like a security company. Okay, that's the stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm like, How old is wow. I mean, yo, David, so David, I would say David no more than 25, 26 okay. now. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm that's like, that definitely make you yeah, feel good. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> he did. I used to take him to work, pick him up from work, uh -huh. calm him down when he was ready to angry, try yeah. to fight me a few times. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like yeah, I mean, like to see the impact that you have on somebody's yeah. life like that is like. That's what I was saying. Like, like I said earlier, like that field is not pain if you're not the person in the field. But when mm -hmm. you get those type of things, man, it's like man, I couldn't imagine doing that. Yo, the most the most painful part. Of being a CEO of now in a larger company mm -hmm. is that we're not that I am personally I am personally not grassroots yeah, anymore. Yeah, because I'm responsible for everything right. that so happens. You can't really get that feeling. With yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. That's why yeah. I hire people who have specific focus right. on grassroots. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's like smart. the B theory. Like we started. Like, like, yo, a lot. we're buying. We're we're trying to buy MTA buses. Okay. That we're gonna outfit and send through every and send through hoods in the community. To teach different classes and STEM okay. activities. Okay. So, they like this Saturday, this Saturday we might be down in Winchester, Winchester, like uh, Sandtown or Winchester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they can just come on the bus, learn STEM and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Okay. And then we can also talk to them about mental health if they're interested. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Like that's what's up. Somebody who does that grassroots stuff for yeah, us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm yeah. off doing other stuff yeah. like, you know, real estate and mm -hmm. restaurants and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now, right, you know. Right. Okay. So, that's what's up. Yeah, that's a hell of an accomplishment. I, 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 you definitely put me on. I knew about a lot of that, but now I ain't know it was like yeah. that. So, um, moving forward, what, what about when I came to the spot of uh, Pikesville? That's 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 you too. The beauty spot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's us. Okay. Yeah. You so, want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, let me turn around. I didn't realize I mentioned that. <laughs> so, um, selfish beauty. Okay. So, um, me, my wife. Uh, my buddy Jamil, mm -hmm. his wife Keisha, mm -hmm. and Kelly. Okay. Um, we're the business partners and owners of Selfish Beauty. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just like a creative. I'm glad you mentioned it. I almost forgot that. Yeah, yeah. You know dope space. It's, 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 dope it's, space. It's, it's a creative spa. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a spa in general. We don't do massages, mm -hmm. but we do, you know, manicures, pedicures. Mm -hmm. Uh, lashes, brows, um, facials, um, post surgery, body treatments. Okay. Uh, we've been partnered with um, 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 someone that does uh, like I mean not like um, Botox. Okay. Dr. Rotman, mm -hmm. who does Botox pop ups mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's a beauty spa, but it's designed in a very cool way. Yeah, it is. We got art yeah. installations. Yeah. We got photo op opportunities. That joint with the basketball goal real Yeah, sweet. yeah, yeah, like yeah. 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 Like, like, like right now in the South is summer. So we have like pool floats on the ceiling okay. and stuff like that. Okay. We have like an art display in front of the Moss Wall that says Selfish. We got a lounge mm -hmm. that can be rented out for private events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. So, um, so yeah, Selfish Beauty. And then we have our own merch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we have our merch and installation that. where people buy selfish merch mm -hmm. merchandise. Mm -hmm. It's available right now. Make sure you go to I'm So Selfish Beauty yeah. and buy some. Go get that. Go um, get that. Yeah, and it's fire too. I'm, yeah, I'm and with, I, uh, I designed I designed the merch. Okay, like, I got I, the green T-shirt with the, the lime green like yeah. nine five. Yo, you so. got yeah yeah you gotta go see this new stuff we got there okay. right there. With the, you got the stuff with the uh, green on the back too. No, it's just on the front. Oh, the light green. Yeah 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 yeah. You gotta see this new stuff. You okay. go nuts. Yeah. Um, so is that you can go to the spot and buy it? You can go to the spot and buy it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can buy it online. Okay. Right. Um, um, but yeah. So even with that, the idea was to give people and especially women mm -hmm. a place where they can come and be selfish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Women do a lot for other people. Their mothers, their wives, they their sisters. The 
they go we they just give their self to everybody, but then sometimes they neglect themselves. So this was an opportunity for us to uh, create a space where women could be the priority. And not, I'm just using women. Yeah. It's open for men as well. Okay. But this this could be a place where they could make themselves a priority. Okay. And come and take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Not only beauty wise and on the outside, because mm -hmm. then what we do, we have something called nail flows and combos. Mm -hmm. In which BTS T come and provides okay. mental health groups. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. We would do yeah. it like the second Tuesday, first Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. where they people would come out and they would just hear all these different groups and about mental health mm -hmm. and about just women's care. So we partnered with like my like my girl Spirit down in Atlanta, who's okay. like on Oprah's show and like a relationship therapist to celebrities and stuff. Mm -hmm. She came down and was talking about relationships and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like sex, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Just talking about all that different stuff. Mm -hmm. We have people that talk about finance. We have people that talk about trauma, depression, mm -hmm. all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? And these things. So it's about also making sure that that you look good, but on the outside, but that you're also well on the inside. Right. You know what I'm saying? So whole nine yards. Yeah, that stuff is beauty. Okay. You know, all it's a you know black owned beauty spa in Pikesville in the same shopping center as Ruth Chris. Yeah. So tight. you know that's like <laughs> that's, that's tight. Epic, you know saying I mean? something. Yeah. You yeah. definitely saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, hard. You know. That's hard. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> So moving forward, uh, I guess you bring it to where we at now. Yeah. Black Swan would probably be. Hey, I ran out of Black Swan too. I did too, and that thing hit too. I'm about to take <laughs> Chef and ask. He said he made some chicken and stuff, everything else too. Yeah, please bless it. That 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 thing dangerous right here, boys. They don't even think it's gonna creep up on you like that. But um, how you come up? So I know you said you started with the idea with the parties in your basement. Was was that the baby that created this? Um. Black song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm just saying this. Um, no, so like, again, we was always about curating experiences, you know, and um, I would travel and go to different restaurants, get exposure and be like, yo, this is lit. So yeah. whether it's like Kong in Paris, mm -hmm. Madingjong in Paris, if it's the Buddha Bar in Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. if it's a place in Athens, if it's, you know, the the PhD, Tulum. PH Taboo in Tulum, mm -hmm. if it's PhD in New York, okay. if it's the Dream Hotel or Beauty and Essex out of LA or yeah. something like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, or Kiki in the River yeah. down in Miami, yeah. you know, yeah. you travel to see all these different, you travel around, you experience all these different places and you're like yo this stuff is lit yeah, hell yeah. and then you come home like y'all want to keep the party going yeah. and be like all right where we gonna go and you're like we ain't got it you know i it. love the charleston but this is i don't yeah. feel like putting on a blazer this is not quite the energy right. i want you right. know what i'm saying right. i like you know i'll go to fridays but i don't want to you yeah. know be around <laughs> that and they don't have the caliber of food i want yeah yeah you know like where can yeah. i go for where i can hear music it can be pop, it can be mm -hmm. urban, the concept is good. Mm -hmm. Um Man, we might have missed the fool. Because <laughs> Chef, I think he might not want to walk in or whatever. Uh, um but um um you know uh it's like Wick there was no place like that. Nah. And so I'm like, man and so I always was had like this thing like, man, you know like the food is good and everything, like we got we got great food here in Baltimore and everything. Um mm -hmm. Um, but there's no spot like this. Right. I was even to the point like, man, I'm just gonna move. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move and go to a go somewhere else where I'm going where where the energy is like that. And then I'm like, man, no, but I really want to do my own thing. Yeah. And then I was like, but do I want to invest this level of money and the time into something that, you know, people might not even have people might not even like like that and mm -hmm. might want to patronize. Mm -hmm. They might not be receptive to it. You know. Yeah. And I just wasted my time to do something I could have used this to go somewhere else. Because you know how we get sometimes. And I was like, well, you know what? And just started calling me, you know? And, <laughs> but I'm the type of person that likes to put stuff out into the atmosphere. Yeah. So I like to talk about it and mm -hmm. say, hey, and build with other people that's in this industry. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I met my boy Chad, who owns Food Market. Mm -hmm. My um, My son and... Uh, the owner of Shoe City was in the same class. Okay. And so I had a holiday. We had a, 
we had a happy hour at our house, like a parent social mm -hmm. at my house. And he came through and we was chilling. Mm -hmm. And he was like, all right, I'm going to do Christmas mm -hmm. party. So we went through a Christmas party. And Chad was catering, providing, like, mm -hmm. the food and everything. And me and Chad just got to build, like, this, mm -hmm. just, like the relationships and everything, yeah. man. Yeah. And, you know, we just get to chopping it up. And I'm like, yo, I really want to do something like this. Just this vibe like this. Mm -hmm. And me and Chad just stayed in contact, stayed mm -hmm. in contact, you know. And... I called Chad one day, me and, my, me and Jada, was, my business partner was talking, and we were like, yo, we should do like this Asian style thing, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Chinese food, like we could do we could do that too. Like yeah. it doesn't, like people sell fried chicken that ain't black, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. we can maybe, yeah. we Why can not? sell less or whatever, you Why know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's not like food, food comes from different nationalities, but it's not specific to any specific no. race. Every like, race. Who likes to consume it yeah. and who can do it well, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we we're like, maybe we should look into doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so I called Chad, like, yo, pull up tomorrow morning. Let's talk about this, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I got this idea and I think we're ready. Mm -hmm. And Chad was like, nope. <laughs> don't. He came through and was like, yeah, that's a good idea, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. If you're going to start off, you need to have a product that everybody is willing to consume on a daily basis. Okay. He said, yo, when you sometimes you eat Chinese. You don't eat Chinese every day. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want something. You it, it, Sometimes you want this. Sometimes you don't. Right. So American is the best way to go. Uh -huh. Speaking of, we got Chef. <laughs> What's, What's up, Chef? chef? Hey, oh, it's going on, bro? He brought us a oh, chicken right. box. <laughs> okay. This is the chicken I, box. I didn't bring this chicken box. No, you ain't got it. I'm sure it's all good. I'm a little crackhead, dude. Okay. I, I still need to taste the salmon cake. Oh, oh. <laughs> you sold out of that. <laughs> so, What's um, this? This is ketchup? Yeah, so it's ketchup, hot sauce, or mumbo sauce, one okay. of them. Cool. Um, so, Chad was like, no, that's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, we'll bet. Good, let's get a reality check. Mm -hmm. um, Chad calls me and says, yo, Kava, I know the owners from Kava, mm -hmm. they're closing the Baltimore location. Okay. He said, yo, they told me about it. I can come in there. They offered me the opportunity just to come in there and just do it. But I've realized, like, yo, you have an interest for something like this. And this. Thanks, bro. Damn. Cheese steak spring rolls, too? Okay. And the black swan. Thank you. Thanks. You got a fork for this one? Yep, I'll give you a fork. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Yep. You want the roll? Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll connect tonight, right? Yeah, we'll connect tonight. Did Chef make it onto the camera? He's Come on, tell you something, dude. This Weenie Answers podcast. This Chef, Black Swan. Check him out, yo. How you guys? See him in the mix. Chef, appreciate <laughs> it. The man. The man. Nah. Yo. Nah. We yo, I ain't no man. Things off the chain. Bro, the regular bro. chicken box is <laughs> same. Let me, tell, let me tell you this. I had to convince, we had to convince Chef mm. to make fried chicken in this menu. Oh, for real? Yeah. Make a chicken box. You are with that? No, not that he's not with our that. Our culture, man. We, yeah. we, 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 he, get, we get so many versions of the fried chicken. Our grandmother, our aunt, our yeah. sister, we can do it. Right. Uh, it's like everybody got the best fried chicken. Everybody True. got the best macaroni and cheese. Everybody yeah. got the best potato salad, yeah. cabbage, uh -huh. you know, sweet potato pies. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. not like, you know, did we want to set ourselves up to say that we're going to continue to have a fight of we have okay, the best. The best. Okay, got gotcha. you. You know what I mean? But, we, but, but what the fight was that we were saying that, you know, it's not a fight. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. Yeah. We're we're so yeah. multi diverse. We're yeah. we're just we have versions of so many different things. Yeah. Where and it's Baltimore. It's Baltimore. It's Baltimore. Like right. we that's why we, we landed on it. We had yeah. to do it. Chef, I'm saying that to say Chef Palette uh -huh. is up here. Okay. Okay. There's not gotcha. too many people you know that can cook for him. Yeah, he yeah, cooked This I man cooks for Obama. I got you. Okay. He cooks for Kelly okay. Plank. Okay. Under 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 Armour. Okay. He cooks for so many A-listers and yeah. okay. and rich people. Hill you know Ridge. what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, okay. Like okay. Dave Cordish, like the, you like, know the okay. live casino, yeah. horseshoe casino, like the okay. owners that you that you don't see every day. Yeah. But you go and you patronize their yeah. establishment. Yeah. 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 Like gotcha. I'm in their homes right. cooking for them, and okay. they're like, "Oh, everything's great." Okay. So real deal. So yeah. now yeah. everybody's been like, "Chef, say, oh, why don't you have your own restaurant? Why do you have your own restaurant? We see how you make this." To the talk, talk, we see how you make all of these fancy things, <laughs> right, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And he's and they, and they, and then they like he's like when I you know I'm when I get ready or whatever, and then I'm like chef, let's do this, <laughs> and he like bet we are gonna put this. caviar. <laughs> oh, I'm about to show chef like yo, I'm gonna show these dudes. Yeah, yeah. 
who I am and my yeah, skill set. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to become yeah, James Beard yeah, off the yeah, rip. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we was like, Chef, that's cool. Right. We're going to get there. Yeah. We're going to get there. <laughs> However, we need to. We need to make this bulk. We need to yeah. have the soul of bulk. Yeah. And that's not to say that Baltimore is soul it? isn't that. Yeah. I said, yo, where our sweet spot is, is where we need to be elevated, all of those things that you know. Yeah. But we also need to be urban. Right. Yeah. And urban, you know, I got into it with some people that was like, uh, Chris, um, we want to know if urban stands for black. You know, because... Right. Um, you know, I'll, I have some white friends and they're inquiring about, mm -hmm. is this just a black place and everything else like yeah. that. If you look up the context of urban, uh -huh. urban means city. Okay. Urban is a city, it's an area. It's a it's a metropolitan it is, yeah. area. Yeah. That's what urban is. And that's urban is, black, urban white, is, it, whatever. Everything. Urban is soulful. Yeah. Urban is like grungy. Yeah. It's, it's hard, it's a city. Right. Yeah. If you go to New York City, Baltimore City, it's hard, yeah. It's but it has elegant features. Right. That's what we are. Right. Right. But urban is where you get your style from. Yeah. You know, that's where the people, like if you go back to the break dancing in the urban community, yeah, yeah. that's where a lot of these dances and stuff it's that- It's not negative. No, it's, it's not negative. negative. Not it, yeah. do, it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, yo, this is any downgrade of a product yeah, or anything. Right. It just means anything. that we understand that we're gonna make this about city, mm -hmm. experience, lifestyle, culture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, even with that being said, like, in the urban, in the urban element, like that climate, everything is birthed from that. Yeah, birthed from the city. Because yeah. the urban part yeah. is the inner. The of suburbs right, right, are right, birthed from right, the city. Right, everything. Yeah. Yo, Nobody this, comes here to go to the city. They come to the harbor. They come to the city. No, there's no everything. suburbs without a city. Exactly. The city yeah. is the anchor in right. your real estate development. Right. Exactly. And you right. build around build the around city. It. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's the anchor. Right. So that everything starts and creates in cities. Right. For the right. most part. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, Chef, yo, like, he's like, yo, I want to show <laughs> these other dudes who done got their shots yeah. that, you know, He's black. He's been in these kitchens before, yeah. not been respected to the level of his counterparts right. who ain't got nothing on him. Yeah, right. But just because they, are? just because they are from a different race and from different relationships, they're valued a bit more. Right. So chef, like, yo, I'm gonna show them now. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> let's remove the ego from yeah, the situation. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And it wasn't a hard fight. Anything. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's a very humble dude. You know what I'm saying? Very yeah. bigger plan. Let's like, remove like, that. Go ahead. No, it's just a bigger plan. Yeah. Like, like what was what happened and how everything was curated, mm -hmm. it was literally by design. Okay. So it wasn't just kind of like, it came out of ideas, but yeah. then it started becoming like, this is who I am. Right. Like the passion was there. Okay. And then, then, then one level of passion connected with another level of passion, you uh -huh. know, where it's like, oh, wow, you feel the same way I feel. Yeah. You know, we, we're aligned, you right. know? Right. So now we're at a point where it's like, no, it's fine. Right. We are here yeah. as, as Black Swan. We will yeah. always be that. Yeah. But then we have levels. Right. Of black swan, yeah, black swan yeah. will continue to keep going higher, and going higher and higher and higher. And so imagine we're, how many people you gonna put on with this higher taste. We're just, we're, yo, we're, we're layering yeah. it on every That's what we're doing. time. Right. And, right. And okay. it's, it's, where we are right now yeah. is great. Yeah, like, and we're paying yeah. respect to Baltimore. It's like yeah. there's no way we can open up a restaurant in Baltimore. Like Chef put Lake Trout. You could have did catfish. Mm -hmm. Put Lake Trout and grits. Yeah. Because that's, that's our, that's our thing. Yeah, that's We're our, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm right. saying? Stone Even the crab old, cake yeah. got a little yeah. old bay on top of it. You know right. what I'm saying? Splash right. with, I ain't going to give you all the details <laughs> of that. A splash of that. So we got the crabs in Baltimore. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's only right. It's, it's only us right. paying homage to that city, city and the culture while at the same time still elevating the experience and yeah. elevating the right. palate of food. Right. You know what I'm saying? Basically saying we can do all this and still We do all of that. Experience. Don't put us in a box. Yeah, Don't put us yeah. in a box. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you think that the only food that we can cook is soul food. Right. right. It's like, no. Nah. Yeah, we do it yeah, all. We do it all. Wait till you see the perch. Yeah. Wait till you see the things that I know that. Put some quail on the menu. Yeah. Quail, when you go down <laughs> in, certain, in, in certain areas where you know, people grew up fishing that. Yeah, yeah. Like in Cherry Hill, when right. you were on the bridge at right the Tapsico, right, right by the hospital. you was fishing, yep, yep. you know, you was getting, you was getting your little perch, yeah, you was getting this, yeah. and you would take it back home, you right. would hook it up. Mm -hmm. They're all the things that, that we're considering like, oh, yeah. black, Baltimore, yeah. this is yeah. who we are, this is culture, it's That's not. Real. 
I'm Imagine not, somebody from over Cherry Hill seeing you like, wow. I know that. Man, I man. can relate to that. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it'd be in a very eleva elevated right. way. In the right. right. way. He's going to give you that. But then he's going to give you the black bass with purple, like purple potato, yeah. mashed potatoes. Yeah. Where the beurre blanc sauce. Yeah. People don't even know what beurre blanc is. You no, know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't. He's going to give you the beurre blanc sauce with the purple mashed potatoes and yeah. the asparagus. Like black bass. Come yeah, on. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's different. He's gonna get an airline chicken. You know what I'm yeah, saying? With, yeah. the, with the glaze and the mush yeah. or a bit of mushroom. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. It's valid. Yo, it's different. Educating. You know what I'm saying? It's like, about yeah. again. It's about like as we as giving back again. Mm -hmm. So it's not saying our because our culture, our patronism just isn't black. All we right. have a diverse crowd. So it's not. It's not saying that anybody's palate mm -hmm. isn't up here, mm -hmm. or that we're giving back like where, where people don't know how to eat. Yeah. It's not saying that one bit. Mm -hmm. They're saying that, hey, we've been around the world mm -hmm. and dying and cooking these different experiences. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're bringing a taste to Baltimore and a flavor to Baltimore that people aren't used to mm -hmm. in a high-end establishment type of place. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. if, if you go to a high-end establishment, uh, I'll use Charleston again. Mm -hmm. They're not getting chicken right. box. Right. No. no. You know what I'm saying? No. But that's fine. That's cool. It's That's totally for them. Fine. You're getting more of that Parisian small style, yeah. you know, um, foods. You know, mm -hmm. our thing is that we want to give you a classy place with touches and of, of soul. That's why we got the DJs, right? And right. all that other stuff. So right. just connecting with the people. Like, yeah, we are. We are the people. Like mm -hmm. we make I, the rules. I was the guy riding dirt bikes yeah. on Fulton Avenue. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, you know, I yeah, understand. Yeah. We are the people. Yeah. So it's like the backstory. That's the. Okay. the that's the greatest part about it. Every restaurant tour doesn't have a story that can connect with the community. Right, right. And that's we, important. We have that's a story important. that can connect with the community because yeah. we didn't wake up saying, right. "Okay, we have a restaurant. I'm, yeah. I'm the, I'm the chef. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, I curate this." Like we didn't wake up, yeah. you know, with that. We, yeah. we were in the whole trenches with it all. Yeah. And now yeah. we're here, so we understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. understand what, what how we can you know continue to develop. We can where our ears are to the street. Right. Where we hear what the people right. want. Right. We yeah. see what the people yeah. want. And that yeah. and that's and that's Black Swan, man. Yeah. We you know, you look you just walk every time you turn your head in Black Swan, you will see somebody you know, somebody you heard of, yeah. a person that is considered a black swan that yeah. made a major impact in right. life. Right. You know, um you turn around here, black is beautiful. You see yeah. black. Even if you don't see nothing else but the color black, yeah, you know what's up. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That, it's that, done that's in an just, elegant way. Yeah. In an elegant way. And it allows people to see, like, yo, whether it's a white person, Asian person, yeah, whoever, a black person, to see black being displayed in a way that's classy and yeah. elegant. And still real. So that one, we as a culture can see ourselves in that way instead of the media telling us everything that we're not. Yeah. We get to see everything that we can be. Right, right. Other cultures get to see opposite of that same news story. Yeah. They get to see, oh wow, this is really a cool space. This yeah. is really like yeah. this is not what I read about. And me. still feel welcome. And still feel still welcome. Feel welcome. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Feel feel safe. Yeah. Welcome and and taste and and, and, it's, and it's tasty. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. like that's what we are. Like right. this place is indicative of. Us. We bring everything that we are mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm urban. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can go from I can go from I belong I used to belong to a country club. Mm -hmm. I can go from a country club mm -hmm. to some night nightclub yeah. Yeah. and not yeah. miss a right. beat right. regardless. Right. You know that's what I'm saying? Real. And that's, that's what I that's, and that's yeah. what that's I want to provide here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but this is a respectable place at the same time. Right, right. And it's and it, in order for us to be elevated, as we said. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people come dress appropriately for the elevated experience at the same time. Right. right okay. You know what I'm saying? Elevated True. ain't you know, I just hopped out the bed, turned my swag on, yeah. look in the mirror, say what's yeah. up. Right. And I'm Who coming right and I'm coming right to yeah. lunch. Yeah. Cool. And I'm gonna come right to dinner. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not it. <laughs> elevated means like, yo, I'm looking forward to going out tonight. Yeah. I just got these new shoes, yeah. or I got these oh whatever. Yeah. And I get I wanna get dressed and I wanna go hang out and have a blast. Feel my best, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. That's what that's that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. This, I, like we said in our thing, our dress code isn't to eliminate anyone. Mm -hmm. It's to elevate everyone's mm -hmm. dining experience. And if you know, if this is not your cup of tea or how you like to dress, 
cool. We are here for you whenever you whenever you desire. Right. But there are other places that you can patronize yeah. in the process. You know what I'm saying? And you we want them. everyone. But if everyone doesn't want to dine with, with us yeah. in that capacity, then that's cool. That's still my brothers. Right. Yeah. I, like my cousin got upset because he couldn't wear shorts to the 4th of July party. Mm -hmm. Bro, what do you want from me? This isn't a short restaurant. Down, There's plenty of places down here you can wear shorts to. Yeah. You know, this this just isn't one. God yeah, respect it. Oh. Once you respect the mission, you'll understand. Plan accordingly. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's 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 bottom line. It's like, hey, you know, you, you you know, you go to a wedding, you go to a wedding, you understand that mentally where what you what your attire is. I'm not you, wearing khaki you know? suits to a to a black tie wedding. Right. Not happening. You know what I'm saying? Come out, I'm gonna respect the establishment and what's happening. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Chef. Thank yeah, you. Got appreciate, it, appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to respect the establishment. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you know what? Everybody's been receptive. You know, we, most things we, and here's the thing about us. We understand some people may come through and not know what the, the dress code is off the rip. Mm -hmm. mm, sorry. <laughs> Somebody ain't going to be like, yo. It's good, man. Huh? <laughs> Destroying this food on camera. But, That's that black swan. <laughs> <laughs> some people. So what we do, instead of turning people away mm -hmm. and making them feel unwelcome, mm -hmm. yo, chef got these pants that the chefs wear. Okay. We ordered like a dozen more chef pants. Mm -hmm. But people. So that if you come in shorts, listen, we don't want to turn away. You can put these pants on. Okay. At no charge to you. Okay. You just put the pants on and you can come in and chill. Mm -hmm. If you got a white tee on, a black tee on, whatever else, you got some, you know, some people wear some explicit language on their shirts. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, we got these black tom. Black Swan tees for sale, mm -hmm. or we can we have blazers that we have just sitting around. Mm -hmm. We give you a blazer, you can put that on and come and dine. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been so receptive to it, bro. All right. Because you know what? You know what? People have been wanting this. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They have wanted you know, a place go like this. Exactly. Yeah, we need it here. So that's why it's so yeah. it's so important. That's why that's why I think for the people that that don't get it, the ones that do, like. From our era and the era before, like, I mean, you before me, but we know what we had to do to get this. We got to go out there. Yeah, bro. I so was, now we appreciate it more because, all right, well, yeah, we got to respect this. It was this podcast somebody sent me about, you know, I'm talking about um, somebody who had an interaction with one of our staff here, like through social media or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this podcast was talking about it and... Um, Paul from Civil, shout out to Paul, mm. was on there talking about, um, you know, being a black business and stuff like that. And then um, one guy, uh, Q was on there, and then one other guy said something. He was like, we got to we gotta treat this business as if we own it. Because mm. we got equity in it. Because this is our place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got to defend it. Mm. We gotta uphold it. Yeah. We gotta respect That's it. That's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. We can't go on the internet and post some negative stuff just to post it. Right. Just for we don't get many for, for us. We don't get. We many gotta enemies. be able to pull somebody up and and discuss our stuff in an appropriate fashion mm -hmm. so that we can build and and grow from that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, we have to we have to protect this place. Absolutely. I oh, was like, I, agree. I was like, wow, that is a wonderful way to put that. You know, like. You know, like it's if so we had, if we all had that level of investment, yeah, and infinity in our product Amazing that we that we see. use, like it's like that's 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 and and I tell my staff this every time. I say, listen, this may be our restaurant, right? But what we are is a beacon of hope uh -huh. for everyone. Mm -hmm. People have an affinity for us. Mm -hmm. They're gonna wanna they're gonna wanna celebrate their the highest moments of their lives here. Mm -hmm come and, you know, be picked up from some of the lowest moments in their lives here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They feel like this place is theirs. So we have to respect everyone in that capacity. So whatever, we got to make sure we communicate with them in that way, mm -hmm. that we are being timely with our responses, that we're answering the phone, that when they com when they see us, the food, the delivery, the customer service, mm -hmm. everything is one as if each person that came in here was an owner. Yeah. Yeah. That level of respect, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. 
100%. While still being firm, because some people will try to take advantage. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, you know that. You, <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying? But you, but want, you just want people to know, yeah, like, we here for you. Exactly. We ain't, here, we ain't against you, and you exactly. know, in our culture, a lot of people look for the first reason to say something bad. Because they don't get the way that you're saying, like, we should do this because, like he said, we got to keep this because this is ours. This is a place where we can come. It ain't many places here or D.C. that you can come and be comfortable. But you know what, yo? What, it's a lot of... And I don't blame them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The people who even... You know, one, if they want to share their thoughts on how we can improve, All right. cool. Open to it. As a restaurant, we need to be open to hearing not just the accolades, but we need to be able to hear where we can improve that as well. True. But people who's... I don't want to make it seem like that argument isn't valid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But people whose experiences are those, I mean, are ones that one would say it doesn't justify the course of action they're taking. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Like, you got to remember, like, yo, we are a traumatized and abused population of people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And hurt people hurt people. You know what I'm saying? And, and understanding that, it's like, Yo, they might be mad, but they might not even be mad at me. Exactly. I yeah. might not. We might not Don't be the. We might not be the core root of their issue. Yeah. We're the landing pad for. True, true. They might have had ten other experiences. True. Yeah, and this is where they felt the overlooked, the where they felt neglected, yeah. where they felt not valued, right. where they felt discriminated. Yeah. And so they're already coming into this with a level of baggage and trauma. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they're already coming into this with a level of baggage and trauma. Yeah. So, well, something we said might we might not have said something rude to them. Yeah. But it may have triggered something that they've gone through before. True. And now they're like, "What? Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? And that's you ever been in an argument with somebody? You'd be like, "Yo, why did you just get so hyped? Yeah. Because you know I remember, what I'm I remember I went through this before. That's yeah. And they, it might, it might be nothing yeah. I said. Yeah. You but just gotta be, get it because I because I word that I said. Trigger something, they're like, yo, what you mean? Yeah. So what you trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm just trying to say what I say. Right, 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 right. It's right, 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 all right. love, baby. Yeah, You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but, so we have to understand that and be empathetic to that. Yeah. So, again, we'll, we'll continue to train our staff mm -hmm. on empathy, trust, customer service. Yeah. Understanding that. Right. You know, even in situations where we're not wrong, right. you know, it still presents an opportunity for somebody to view it as it's wrong. Yeah. And we have to understand that, you know, and yeah. the goal of any business is to get that, improve upon it, mm -hmm. you know, like don't just block out mm -hmm. whatever and only, you know, be, you know, you gotta hear all of it. Yeah. So what what did it mean to you being in Harvard East? Cause for, for it ain't, how many, is it any other black owned businesses in Harvard East, restaurants? Well, Peter's coming. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, the one yeah. joint. Yeah, okay. And Peter's, um, it's my boy, it's cool. Okay. Um, outside of that, I don't know. I don't know all the, demographical breakdowns of every business here. Yeah. So I can't really say if there are any other. Mm -hmm. I think from a restaurant, you had t -ball, which is slightly oh, yeah. outside of sure. like Harvard East, but uh -huh. I believe from an ownership perspective that we are one of the only black owned restaurants. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, it means a lot, you know, like this is, Harvard East is a very nice area, you know, yeah. and it's where people desire to go out to. Uh -huh. You know, you it's 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 upscale, mm -hmm. it's clean. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it you know it, it, it's nice. It's it's dense, mm -hmm. um, so it's on the water. Mm -hmm. So it's so to be here was like it's important. Like it's like mm -hmm. yeah, man, this is this is like we're, we're not, not we're not shucking it. Like, we're not BSing. Yeah, you know we're not it's like so. we're not. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, it's so. like oh wow, they, this is a legit yeah. place. We're not like just you yeah. know trying to. You know, not go full throttle with it. Like we're, we're going full, we're going fully with it. Yeah, because when I when I first seen it, and then I seen you was on it, I was like, oh, damn, this this is hobby. That's that's big. Like you don't you know we don't go because you know you get that experience coming downtown. But one, if you don't know where you're going, you know you go to spots where it's been um, we're not welcome at. We get that a lot, and then you that's because we want. The whole thing about the experience downtown, people want to go to spots. Like I talked to a girl one time, she was like, these spots aren't cute. They want to go to a place where they can take pictures and look nice and look like they're somewhere else. Well, they feel good when they go. Exactly. Okay. So so when you go to certain spots, it's like, oh, if they don't receive us there, like we want to be received. And then we go down to Canton and all of that. We go to Fells Point and it's like, 
Yeah, like we get these spots. It. Yeah, so it's like this is that's why it was like so perfect to me. Once I seen, I was like, wow, like that's big. For because, me, again, it goes back to that void. Uh huh. Okay. The void was that there was not a place like this, you know. Mm -hmm. And and presenting like this, this is literally a whole business thing. It's not like something you just wake up and do. Yeah. We develop a deck. We develop a concept sheet, videos, and everything to support what we think and that we this thing will look like. Yeah. One thing we identified was that. You either have Baltimore has a lot of beer pubs area, uh -huh. tremendous amount of beer areas, mm -hmm. you know, and then they have very high casual dining. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of places in the middle ground. Mm -hmm. There's an open market for us to be that middle ground place that's not beer pub, and that's not, you know, you need a you need a tie to get in, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, but we're a place where you can be, it can be flavorful, it can be soulful, mm -hmm. and like just embody who we are as a people, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean just as a, as, as, as millennials, mm -hmm. you know, um, so yeah, that's that void that we stepped in and attempted. I know me, I like to listen to music when I eat. Yeah. I don't. I don't have that much to talk about. <laughs> Just not listen to music okay. the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you remove work from my conversation, it's really not much for me to talk about. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's I the majority of my music. life. You know mm. what I'm saying? Um, music. So let's put the music on so I can yeah, catch a vibe while I, while I yeah. drink and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you put Anita Baker on, I might buy one drink. All right. But you put Calvin Harris on or Drake on, I'm buying a whole bar drink. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. yeah. How was the uh, 4th of July event? It was good, man. It was very nice. It was a um, great turnout. DJ Active. We had... Yo, DJ Active is Janet Jackson's DJ. Okay. Her tour DJ. Okay. And that's your house DJ? No, 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 no. Okay. He, he was the person that. that came for 4th of July. Okay. Janet Jackson's tour DJ... That's serious. ...came to Black Swan in Baltimore. That's serious. He's also Puff Daddy and the Family's D tour DJ. Okay. Like if he wasn't at my Fourth of July joint, he he'd have been at Puff's house. Yeah, at the party up there. That's serious. That's that's, that's saying that's something. Take all this in. That's saying this something. This is different. That's saying it's very different. You know what I'm saying? He ripped the roof off this place. I have seen a you lot of saying? videos. They yeah, party. because it, it it was our first party. Uh, we probably won't have another one until New Year's. Uh -huh. Um, but you know, because we're I want to be very clear, and I hope everybody understands this. We're not a nightclub. Right. We're a restaurant that just has features of these. We have bottle service. They bring it out at a nice presentation. Mm -hmm. It's not exclusive to nightclubs. It's right. just people just know it more from nightclubs. Yeah. We're not a nightclub. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We have the same light show they have. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're not a nightclub. Right. We're a restaurant with flair. Right. So um, it was good. I'm glad we're back to the restaurant dining. <laughs> I want people to develop an affinity for us and mm -hmm. our food and our dining experience as a restaurant. Mm -hmm. These the other things are just one off things. Right, okay. It's not exactly, we're not a party place. No, gotcha. We're a place you can come and have a great time. Yeah. But Enjoy. a place, yeah, you're not coming in and stand on the sofa. Yeah, gotcha. That gotcha. crush probably costs too much. Gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. I understand that. And he did, you haven't seen that, uh, the video of the restaurant? The dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I joke with him. I joke with chef. I'd be like, "Yo, you gonna come out the kitchen like this?" <laughs> How you feel about that? Not not discriminating the the, the company enough. I understand like he wants to res wants people to respect his establishment. Yeah, you know? yeah. But you also have to be, yeah, keep it real. You got to think about how all this lines up. Yeah. You got money bag yo plan. Yeah. You got Hennessy drinks. Yeah, well, what else you gonna get? <laughs> Where do you think this is going? Yeah, yeah. It's not about get? to be a right, gospel right, concert right, yeah, after yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? That's not happening. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We have our palette of music here is we play EDM, top uh -huh. forty, hip hop, and R and B we'll all mixed in. Yeah. So we are like, if you go to Ibiza, yeah. We're that. Yeah. We're giving you that vibe. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. This isn't. If you're looking for a turn up, if you're looking for Gucci man, and I love Gucci and and yeah. Jay Z and the, just like the next man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're just not gonna get that. This ain't the place for it. No. Right. You know what I'm saying? You might get a splash of it here and there. Yeah. But this is like that experience. I want when you hear people be like, "Yo, I feel like I'm in like New York. I feel like I'm in Greece, right? Or Paris, or like yeah. LA somewhere. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So I get what he's saying. And then we got craft cocktail program. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, we got Call a Hack, mm -hmm. which is a, 
a Casamigos flight. Okay. Again, that's us paying homage to Baltimore. Yeah. Call a hack, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but again, we're not creating all of those elements mm. for somebody that starts standing on the sofa doing dinner. Right. So he, I don't know all the backstory, and I yeah. refuse to kind of like judge somebody without knowing everything. I understand. But you got to look at, yo, what was the environment? In, in certain environments, certain things grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. palm trees don't grow here. Yeah. Gotcha. But in Florida, they grow because yeah. of that environment. <laughs> right. What is this environment that we're curating yeah. that allows us to grow? Right. Okay. Yeah. One question I ask all my guests, uh, what does Baltimore mean to you? What does Baltimore mean to me? You just, you just shot me a text on the side. <laughs> no, I wanted to no. be. I wanted raw, man. I want you to tell me what what it means to you. Pause. <laughs> Stop right there. Pause. Um. <laughs> oh, you right. Pause. Double <laughs> that. Double pause. But no, what, what do it mean? No. And I and I see that in the essence of, of um your business is aimed with you. Like what well, what does it mean? It's, to it's, you? It means a lot to me, man. This is why I was birthed. This is my kids are birthed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My business is a birth. Mm -hmm. You know, like Well, I went to Lake Clifton, like my buddy was just here yesterday, celebrate his birthday, and we've been graduated for twenty years from Lake Clifton. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when you go to Lake, people ain't expecting you to be nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The bottom of the bottom. The bottom of the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And to be able to grow and do what we've done is it's exciting, but if I would have grew up in Silver Spring, mm -hmm. no shade to that, just a nice place. Yeah. I don't know if I would be the same individual. You wouldn't have that drive. Yo, it's tenacity, that yeah. resiliency yeah. that Baltimore teaches you. Like I said, Baltimore is a hard but a beautiful place. Yeah. That's why we have concrete floors and then we have gl glamorous chandeliers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're representing Baltimore and all that we do here. Yeah. So Baltimore, man, I don't know if I would be, I wouldn't be who I am without Baltimore. Right. I wouldn't be kind and caring, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and be able to give back. I wouldn't understand the stories mm -hmm. and what's needed so that you can give back in an appropriate way. Yeah. And for Baltimore, I also wouldn't be as successful and tenacious, uh -huh. you know, and just like and com a competitor yeah. and just want, you know, just know that, all right, this may be a setback, but this ain't it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't yeah. be able to be that right. without Baltimore. Yeah. You know, I, I, the relationships yeah. that people that come here, they come to support, they love, you know, they like to see me, they see Chef, yeah. they love this. That's because of Baltimore, we grew up here. Yeah. We know the people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, we have our fingers on the pulse of the people. You can't curate a black swan without coming from Baltimore, being, being in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, some people question, like, I don't know if that's gonna work, Whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, this is 1,000% going to yeah, work. Because yeah. I know the people and I know what they right, want. Right. If I wasn't from here, I wouldn't, I might not know that. Yeah. Imagine how many people, because I'm one of, like, you know, back in the day, we used to go out. I used to go out a lot. But now, today, I'm not really into the club as much as I used to be. So, you got a whole group of people that still want to be out, but don't want to go to the club, and they got a place like this to go to and chill. Every time I look on Instagram, I see people at the bars chilling and all that. So I'm glad, because like you said, previously you said, I thought about leaving and going somewhere else because I wasn't getting that experience here. But you bought it here. So I'm glad that you did, like, because we, yeah. we need it. I don't want to go to a club. Yeah, I don't, I don't even You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm off that. I, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't want to. Sometimes I will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Depending on where we at and what's the, mm -hmm. what's the vibe. I, I am perfectly fine being able to go to dinner, hear music, yeah. get all those features, but not have to deal yeah, with, yeah. you know. Standing around. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you. Niggas out for that, though. But, I mean, like you said, every now and then. But, um, shit, in closing, we hit all the, all the points. We definitely, I'm definitely glad that you was able, we was able to make this happen, for real. Like I said, we go back, way back. Oh, you my brother. I told you, I didn't even know what we were talking about. Yeah. What's the format of it or anything. You say, hey. Yo, I got this. I want to do something. Perfect. Yeah, Whatever. I, I Let me know. I appreciate you. I definitely appreciate it. Let me know. 100%. 100%. So, uh, my last question before we close out. Um, I want to know, what advice would you give to anybody watching this that, you know, they might aspire to be uh, design clothes. They might aspire to open their own restaurant, lounge. They might aspire to be in the mental health space. What what advice would you give somebody that's just an entrepreneur that need that push or need something to hear that just like, from somebody that did it? I'll give you two. All right. 
one for people that are getting started or along that journey and people who are in the middle of it mm -hmm. one your dream is your dream for a reason it's not somebody else's dream mm -hmm. it's not somebody else's vision you know what i'm saying so don't allow other people to tell you what your dream is and what it should look like and how it should be mm -hmm. obviously don't be ignorant to positive advice mm -hmm. but i see people that that had disparaged me or told me what I was doing wasn't right, I should do it this way or whatever. I now see them doubling back to do some of the same things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, or people telling me that a certain concept wouldn't work and I see them implementing similar mm -hmm. strategies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is, it's not one person specific. I see, I see it from a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. But my vision is my vision for a reason and I've been blessed with that vision so I need to stick to that and don't allow them to help me, to stray me from my course. Mm -hmm. Stay my course, be faithful, you know what I'm saying? Be focused, um, committed, and understand that my season will come. Everybody wants things overnight and it might not be your season. Mm -hmm. You're going through these trials, you're going through these tribulations so that you can better improve and get better so that when your season comes, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. I give the analogy, you remember James Bond? Mm -hmm. 007 game yeah. on Nintendo 64. Yeah, golden eye. Yep. You couldn't get off a board until you got everything you needed from that board. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. So, Cause when you get to the train, mm -hmm. you need that laser watch yeah, yeah. to get off the train before it blow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, yeah. At some point you need proximity mines or yeah. remote control mines or whatever. Yeah. But if I didn't get that laser watch from the previous board, I would be stuck on that train for right. the blow up. Right. So understand the, 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 the level that you're on. Yeah. Gain everything you're supposed to be receiving from that level. Yeah. Understand it, grow with it, get all, get it all. Right. So then now, when that door finally open, that door, you know, when you if you don't get everything, you get to the end of golden eye. Mm -hmm. That door is not open. Right. It's only open when you got everything you were supposed to get. Exactly. Exactly. So stay on your course. When you get everything you're supposed to get, that door will open up. Right. When that door opens up, then it's go time to the next level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the last thing I would say is. Develop sustainable and replicatable systems. Okay. If you want to grow in business, you got to be able to scale. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're able to scale is if you have systems. Mm -hmm. If you're the entrepreneur and you got staff members, but all the knowledge is in your head, mm -hmm. and you do payroll, you do accounting, you do this, you do that, you're only good as you. Yeah, if something happens to you, if, even if you're on vacation, then you got then who's going to do it? Yeah. So you or you want to your vacation up? You need people. 1,000% need yeah, people. Yeah. But you need to build infrastructure that allows people to be great, that you respect them, to be smarter than you mm -hmm. in certain capacities of the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that you value their opinion, you treat them well. Mm -hmm. But then that you create these systems that allow, whether it's employee one or employee 195, mm -hmm. that they experience and that the process for each one of them are the same thing. Okay. Because then now you can take that and now you take this experience from running this, run it in the spa, run it in the restaurant, mm -hmm. run it wherever. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 100%. And I'll say my what I learned from this. Is that this chicken is good. Yeah, hell yeah, everything good. The drink definitely got me where I need to be. The fries and this egg roll. Um, what I was going to say is what I learned from this is your resilience. I tip my hat to your resilience because you never got stagnant with anything. And like I said, even before you before you shared all this stuff, I learned stuff from your process. And for what I already knew, it was always, like you said, once I got finished with that clothing line, I knew it was time to move on. Yeah. It wasn't just move on and do this. It was move on, do this, take it to another level. Move on and do this, take this to another level. It's not just yeah. standard, uh, standardized. Yeah. And I love that. Like I appreciate that. And it, it motivates me to keep, because cause I think a lot of people get stagnant every time Like with like, all right, well, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. So I'm a chill. But no, nah, you... you Everything is like everything story you shared is like we did this, but then we did this, but then we did this, and I think that's a very important message. Yeah, and what you need it, like you said, I I hope and pray that besides me, because it's definitely more than me, but I hope it's somebody that that needed to hear this and just know that you know, like you said, like we said at the beginning, we see niggas in the streets, we seen them do it, make money, get the cars, get the women, we seen that's attainable, so it's like all right, let me do that, I see it, but now you see Chris Simon who can, he went from clothing line mental health 
to restaurants, which is way bigger than all that other bull stuff, that, that street stuff. And they can see like, all right, well, shit, I'm black. I'm from the city. I'm from the hood. I went to this school and I can do it too. So, and I know it's cliche to say, but you don't really get this, realize how how you can really do stuff until you see or know somebody exactly. that did it. So, I appreciate Last that. Last thing I say, y'all. Go ahead. Another two, right? we got to normalize owning stuff that we don't operate. Yeah. People I be agree. like, oh, I'm a I baker, so I'm going to open a, a bakery. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Do that. It's a lot of But that shouldn't business. be the ending. Yeah. Your goal should be to scale so that now you got other bakers baking as you grow, build out these other locations. Yeah. Norm you think the dude that own a quarter pie company is out there changing the shit? Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's normalize yeah. Yeah. As, as a people, your owning stuff, yeah. being great with it, right. but we don't have to be the person to do every single thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So in closing, like I always say, we need answers podcast. Check out the link in the bio to YouTube. Please subscribe. Please download the podcast app on all the app platforms. And if you got any businesses or anything you want to plug, I can drop, you know, DM me, uh, email me at we need answers Inc. at gmail.com. Promote your, your business on here, on the page and all of that. And like that being, with that being said, please come to Black Swan. The food is great. I don't know what nobody talking about, but this chicken, this drink, these fries, the drink definitely got me there. It definitely got me there. So I, I, I appreciate you. Appreciate the hospitality. I appreciate Chef. Thank you. Um, been here once, been here this is the second time, and I'm definitely coming back some more. And if you're from out of town, check it out. It's the place to be when you come to Baltimore. And if so. Open Table says it's not booked and says it's closed, it's not that Open Table is not working. We're just booked. <laughs> but you can feel free to walk in. You can call. We do answer the calls. We just get a lot of them, yeah. and we return them. But you can feel free to walk in, try to get a seat, walk in, hang out at the bar, or walk in and place a reservation for another time. We would love to have everyone. Yeah. Respect the dress code respectfully because they're respecting you. So everybody check that check it out. Please do. Thank you again, Chris. No problem. My brother. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. All right, we need answers. <laughs>